and the Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability is hereby called to order. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to uh, first recognize the House members in plenary, the Honorable Deputy Speaker Dan Fernandez, uh, the Honorable Adjel Kabatbat, President of the National Unification Party, the Honorable P.D. Barsaga. Uh, may I uh, request the Committee Secretary to recognize the members in Zoom and our guests in plenary and in Zoom this morning. Thank you. Chairman, in plenary, we have the following members in attendance. Deputy Speaker Dan Fernandez, Deputy Speaker Dante Marcoleta, we have Representative Argel Joseph Cabatbat, and Representative Elpijo Barsaga. Via Zoom, we have the following members in attendance. We have Representative Stella Kimbo, Representative Gabriel Bordado Jr., Law for Lawrence Fortune, Eupemia Culliamat, Ed Christopher Go, Ron Salo, Maria Victoria Umali, Ferdinand Gaite, Representative Alfred De Los Santos, and the Deputy Majority Leader Bernadette Herrera D. Your Honors. Good morning. Sir, uh, joining us via uh, vibra uh, Zoom are the following. Uh, we have uh, Assistant uh, Secretary Jocelyn Niwane from the DSWD. We have uh, Civil Service Commission Commissioner Ay Lizada uh, and also Assistant Commissioner Ariel Ronquillo and uh, Director Rodolfo Enca Honado. From the AMLC, we have Executive Director Mel Rasella. From the Department of Labor, we have uh, Undersecretary Benjo Santos. And uh, from the Butuan Doctors Hospital, we have uh, Joel Garcia. From Perpetual Soccer Hospital, Gladys Sarmento. From the uh, Cardinal Santos Medical Center, uh, they have uh, two representatives. and. Dr. Jaime Almora from the Philippine Hospital Association. And uh, we would also like to welcome Ms. Uh, Nerisa Santiago from PhilHealth, Jovita Aragona, Renato Limciaco, Mr. Dennis Esmas, Alex Cabuya, Attorney Jonathan Mangawang and uh, Attorney Roberto Labe from PhilHealth. Sir, if the chairperson will allow me to read the Phil, uh, PhilHealth official Go ahead. Zoom. We have uh, Benjamin Page, Andre Samson, Attorney Rodolfo Del Rosario, Attorney Thorson Keith, the ABP and concurrent. Uh, VP, uh, the PhilHealth from Warm, PhilHealth Chona Yap, from 4A Edwin M. Orinia. We also have uh, the acting, the SVP, PhilHealth SVP acting, uh, RBP for Region 8. We also have the PhilHealth VP Hilda Diaz. PhilHealth Acting uh, RBP Dr. Uh, Paolo Johan and PhilHealth uh, Region 2 uh, uh, 
Regional Vice President, Your Honors. We also the PhilHealth CEO, President and CEO, Ricardo Morales. We also with us today in plenary, Dr. Ismael Vargas. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Comsec. Uh, isang mabilis lang po na pagsusuma dun sa mga nangyayari para din po makita ng ating mga kababayan at lahat ng miyembro ng komite kung nasa na po yung uh, sitwasyon ng uh, ating investigasyon at yung makabang na kailangan pa nating gawin. So if I may just present a very short slide of uh, where we are now. Ito po yung ating uh, PhilHealth Organization. Kaya ko po inilagay ito sa, at ipakita sa atin para makita ninyo yung kabuang pagkilos ng PhilHealth. Uh, kung makikita po dyan, uh, malinaw yung mga guests po natin dito, yung mga nagsasalita, ano yung kanilang posisyon, at kung paano nakaka-apekto sa kabuang pagkilos ng PhilHealth. Next slide. Sentrong-sentro sa lahat ng pagkilos ang Chief Operating Officer. Batay na rin yan dun sa kanina pinakita kong slide. At dito po sa kanya nakapailalim ang management services na kung saan nakapaloob ang mga promotion ng ating mga uh, naninilbihan at kawani ng PhilHealth. Dito rin po nakapaloob yung finance. Yung finance po, dito naglalabas ng pondo, dito nagkakaroon ng mga investments. At nandyan din po yung health policy. Yan si Dr. Pargas na siyang gumagawa ng mga pulisiya na gumagabay sa loob ng PhilHealth. Sa tabi rin po dyan, yung legal. Yung legal, meron mga legal din sa loob ng mga region. Ngunit ang pagpa-file ng kaso, ang pagtingin sa mga kaso ng mga ospital, ang pagtingin ng kaso ng uh, nakapaloob ng mga kawani ng PhilHealth ay dyan po nakapaloob. Kung mapapansin ho, yung Bids and Awards Committee direct ang nakapailalim sa President and CEO. Kaya yung usapin ng uh, IT, dyan po nakapasok. Ang actually po, ang IT nasa gilid and then yung internal audit na meron ng PhilHealth ay direkta rin nagre-report sa Board of Directors at saka sa President and CEO. Apat yung kanilang VP at saka po yung mga region. Iba po ang division ng mga iba't ibang region kumpara sa mga opisina na sanay po tayo no, na per region. Pati dito ho, may apat na VP at dyan nakapasok din yung kanilang mga regional directors. Next slide. Paano ba pumapasok ang punto ng PhilHealth? Sa ospital, papasok sa benefits and administrative services. Uh, Dr. Pargas, Mr. Lim Shaco, our legal uh, Vice President Mas, please correct me kung may nakikita kayong mali dito sa mga presentasyon natin. Wala po sa benefits and administrative services, pinupontohan kagad yan sa central office ng fund management sector. So sa region ho, direct to Sky Finance, a CEO, at sa Chief, sa Chief Operating Officer, at sa Chief Executive Officer o Presidente ng PhilHealth. Kaya kung kumisan, pagka nagawa na ang isang policy at meron ng claims para ko dito, diretso na ko yung uh, claims o finance ng region, diretso sa finance ng Central Office. Next slide. Schemes of fraud, overpayment, sobrang bayad sa ospital. Upcasing, ito po yung hindi totoong sakit. For example, nagkaupo, And uh, in the, sa ating mga ehemplo, pneumonia ho, no? nagiging pneumonia. At yung ghost patients o peking pasyente. Ito yung mga nakita natin sa pagdaan ng panahon at ito rin yung mga nakita mga audit findings. So isang example po sa nangyari, next slide. Sa public hospital, ang nangyari po dyan, kung 15,000 ang professional fee in the case of pneumonia, yung 5,000 na mapaghati-hatian yung professional fee. Kasi o pag pumasok naman ng pondo sa loob ng public hospital, ay hindi na ito basta-basta may ilalabas. Marami ng proseso sa loob ng gobyerno. Pero yung professional fee, eh, ito ho yung nagagalaw. Sa private sector naman, for example, in the case of 2017, ang DOH, 454,000 cases ng pneumonia. Sa PhilHealth, 707,000. Ang equivalent po nito, o katumbas na preso, ay 3.8 billion. In the latest hearings with Dr. Pargas, sinabi niya for this year, 2020, 3 ang nakikita na nilang nawala sa pondo because of the scheme under the uh, case rate system na, na sinasagawa sa ating feed health. Ngayon, ano po ba? Next slide. 
bagay dito, eto pa agad ang nakikita nating mga problema na regions. Bakit ho? Dahil ito'y official reports ng Commission on Audit. 2013, NCR Region 1, Region 3, Region 9, Region 10, Region 12, Region 13, Armed Car, Region 4A, Region 6, and Region 7. Pinaka-extensive po ang 2013. Noong 2014, 6, 1, 9, and yung Catrack Scandal. 2015, NCR and, Re and Rizal. 2016, Regions 1 and 8. And 2017, NCR Regions 1 and 2. Yung 2018 po, technically not yet submitted to Congress. Dahil yan po yung dapat isinagawa ng huling Kongreso. So ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Patay dito. Pwede na itong maging bataya ng pagpahil ng kaso. Sa mga regions na meron ng kaagad na identify ang Commission on Audit, ay pwede na hong mag-file ng kaso. Ang koho, mapapakinggan natin sa Thursday o sa Webes. Sa ngayon, meron po tayo mga ospital na narito ngayon na pwede na natin makita ang kapuan para ho mabuo ang pagpapakita natin ng pagkatikit-tikit ng proseso at problema ng korupsyon sa loob ng PIDEL. Natapos na po tayo sa Supreme OFW at meron tayong rekomendasyong batas. Yung RIM Cash Advance, patuloy pa po natin pinag-usapan kaling sunod ng all case rates. Magkatabi po yan, kasama yung all case rates para sa COVID. At patuloy pa rin po pag-uusap sa IT at yung COVID testing. So with that, nandito naman po yung civil service na kasama po natin at yung mga hospital. Kung maaari po, kung mabibigyan ng pagkakataon, ay masimulang ko po yung pagtatanong muna sa civil service uh, represented by who may I request sino ho nagre-represent sa ating uh, Chairman Bala of the Civil Service Commission Attorney Ronquillo Attorney Ruggiero is recognized of the Civil Service Commission. Attorney Ronquillo is recognized. Kindly unmute your uh, video, please. Yeah. Your Honor, uh, yes, uh, good morning po. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning all the members of the committee. Thank you, Attorney Rinquillo. Attorney Rinquillo, are you representing the Civil Service Commission or the, or, and uh, Chairman Bala this morning? Uh, I was uh, directed by Chairperson Bala uh, to respond to the invitation sent by the committee, Your Honor. Ay, maraming salamat po, Attorney Rinquillo. So, Attorney Ronquillo, i-direct ko po sa inyo yung mga katanungan. Marami po bang nakafile ng mga kaso ng PhilHealth sa Civil Service Commission? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, meron pong mga cases na nakafile sa amin at saka sa regional offices uh, involving PhilHealth officials. Uh, administrative cases, both disciplinary and non-disciplinary. Mga ilang po ito, Attorney Ronquillo? Um, Your Honor, um, I would just look at the uh, figures, uh, if you will allow me. Um, Your Honor, can I give the figures later? I, I'm, I'm just asking my people to give Thank us you. the exact. Yes, and if you can, uh, can you uh, possibly submit to the committee yung mga cases na yan? Yes, uh, Your Honor, we will uh, submit to the committee. Attorney Ronquillo, are there many final and resolved cases within the civil service regarding PhilEl? Yes, uh, Your Honor. Uh, marami na pong uh, mga tap natapos, pero yung ibang cases po nakapending pa rin po. At marami rin po ba dyan ang mga kasama, ang mga regional vice presidents? Meron pong mga cases ng regional vice presidents po. 
Uh, Sino-sino po ito, Atty. Ronquillo? Your Honor, um, I'll give the names later. I'm just um, requesting for the, for the names of these people. Pinaalam ko lang po, Your Honor. Uh, pakiulit po, Tony Ronquillo. May... Yes, uh, Your Honor, hinahanap po namin yung exact names ng mga uh, uh, regional vice presidents ng PhilHealth na may pending uh, cases po sa amin. Uh, Tony Ronquillo, sige, balik ko na lang po doon sa tanong. Ilan po ang may kaso sa inyong pending mula sa PhilHealth? Attorney Ronquillo, may number yes, po yeah. ba? Your Honor. Go ahead. Would you have the number, Attorney Ronquillo? May numero na po ba kayo kung ilan? Uh, hindi po po. Hindi po po di ba dito yung honor eh. I already tested my um, isang balik po. Attorney Ronquillo, isang tanong lang po. Sige Meron po. po bang dating taga PhilHealth na nagtatrabaho sa inyo ngayon dyan sa Civil Service Commission? Yes, uh, Your Honor. Sino po? Attorney Ken Carenas po. Uh, ano pong posisyon niya ngayon? Attorney 5. Uh, Attorney 5 lang po, but without any... Wala po siyang pinangahawakan na posisyong critical dito sa investigasyong to. Uh, wala po. Wala po, uh, Your Honor. Uh, may I request, uh, Commissioner, uh, I have here a note that you will submit a position paper, Attorney Ronquillo. Is this correct? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, uh, okay din po yan, but can we get the documents as regards yung mga kaso ng PhilHealth sa inyong uh, opisina? Or is this a yes, position? Yes, Your Honor. Along with the position paper, we will uh, submit to the committee. Uh, the uh, cases, the number of cases, as well as the summaries of these cases to the committee. Thank you, Attorney Ricardo. Uh, if I may, uh, Comsec, mabilis lang kong pagtanong kay uh, Commissioner Bala of uh, the Civil Service Commission. Commissioner Lisada, I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Eileen Lisada. Kindly unmute, uh, Commissioner Lisada. Unmute. Good morning, sir. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Good morning, po. Yes, uh, good morning, uh, Commissioner Lisada. Commissioner, kasi po yung mga tanong namin, uh, would you know in particular yung pong uh, ilan ang may kaso dito po sa Civil Service uh, Commission? Uh, what period are we talking about, sir? Because uh, the, the, the request for inventory or audit that uh, my office initiated uh, from 2009 to 2020, sir. Uh, we were given a list of 74 cases, sir. 74 cases. Would this you is know from 2000, sorry, 2010 to from 2020, sir. Current. Thank you for that, uh, Commissioner Lisada. We are very happy with that. Kasi po, ang amin naman eh, kung hanggang kung ano kaabuti ng inyong mga kaso, but 2010 is a uh, maganda po yan dahil talagang malayo magmula pa ho sa ngayon 10 years. Ma'am, malam malaman lang po namin, ilan po ang mga regional vice president na may mga kaso? Sir, based on the data given to me by my legal staff, um RDP po na uh, meron ho kami ng listahan based on the list submitted by the Office of Legal Affairs to us. The names of the following uh, are appearing. Do you want the names, sir, of the RVPs? Sige po, ma'am. Can you kindly name them? Um, Mr. Ernesto V. Beltran, Mr. Dennis Adre, Mr. Macabato, Acting RVP Polero, um, Miriam Grace Pamonag, 
Uh, hindi ko lang ko alam kung if uh, may rembrace yung RVP, but ito yung lumalabas sa amin, sir, na binigay ko ng legal ko. Madam Commissioner, yan pong mga kaso na po ba yan ay decided na o marami pong nakapending pa rin dyan sa inyo? If we're talking about cases from uh, before the previous commission, sir, meron hong dalawang MR remaining and uh, meron, meron din mga pending, sir. Ilan po mamang pending? Based on what my legal gave me, I have um, 19, sir. I might be wrong, but ito ho yung, because I requested for a summary from my legal of the cases. So, from as, as far as I'm concerned, sir, dito na binibigay sa akin, 19. Ma'am, bakit di ba po ang uh, mandated nyo is that uh, within six months, these cases would, should have been resolved and given to the agency concerned? Um, exactly, sir. The same question that I have because ever since I got the list from my legal, uh, pinalagay ko yung mga red flags and observations and uh, I see some periods that are quite short and some periods that medyo uh, years po, sir, ang nakikita ko dito ang iba. Some Mr. cases Chair. na Chair, mabilis na-resolve, yung iba naman po pinapatagal, nakapark po dyan. Can we request them to use a an earphone or what? Uh, Commissioner uh, Lisada. It's very difficult to understand the no. the answer, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Lisada, uh, the Honorable Marcoleta is requesting kasi po gusto niyang intindihin yung sinasabi niyo. Medyo yung signal ata magulo. Uh, hindi ho na masyadong uh, ma-decipher po, ma'am. Uh, how is this, Mr. Chairman, uh, Congressman Marcoleta? Can you hear na po better? Medyo maganda ng konti, Mr. Chair. Thank you, ma'am. Salamat po. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Ma'am, alam po, maraming mga nakapending na matagal taon at marami din pong mabilis na desisyonan. Uh, as far as the summary given to me po by my legal, meron hong mga, meron hong, meron 10 months, meron hong 6 years, uh, merong mga 3 months po. Iba-iba ho yung mga periods, sir. Would those cases constitute a dismissal from the service? Some, meron po. Uh, some meaning more than uh, two, uh, Madam Commissioner. Uh, you are correct, Mr. Chairman. So, Madam Commissioner, Madam Commissioner, ang tanong ko lang po, bakit po parang si Attorney Ronquillo was supposed to be representing the CSC, bakit po parang wala silang uh, hawak na figures at wala pong mga hawak na dokumento katulad po ng hawak nyo sa ngayon? Um, when the president came out with a memo, sir, uh, creating the task force on field health, uh, my office initiated an internal audit or inventory kasi ba literally bago ho ako sa CSC. And I wanted to see the pattern, if ever may pattern po, way back. Uh, but what I got, ang hiningi ko lang po ay 2010 hanggang current. And I realized the creation of uh, field health was prior to 2010. So I wanted to see po kung ano yung data uh, na meron available. So hiningi ko, again, from the establishment of field health, I wanted to see kung pabalik-balik lang po ba o paulit-ulit lang ba ang mga kinakasuhan. So uh, that's what I have right now. But I'm waiting for, and this was, uh, this was uh, shared po office uh, the chairman by the office of legal affairs when they gave the data to me sir Chair, i wanted to see the pattern may i interject yes please? go ahead go ahead madam commissioner i think the chairman is asking a very basic question as a matter of fact we are surprised why attorney ronquillo is not able to give us at least the number of cases of field health officials that are still pending with CSC. I, I'd like to believe that the question is very simple. Tinatanong lamang po kung ilan yung kaso. And considering that pill health is the flavor of the day, in anticipation of questions like that, kaya naman po kayo tinawag para mabigyan nyo kami ng ayuda sa mga gustong informasyon na makuha namin. Pati po ba yung number of cases lang, hindi niya maibigay? May I ask you, Madam, what is the number of existing or pending cases with the CSC 
as of today? As far as yung binigay ko sa akin ng legal ko, um, it is 19, sir. Unless meron hong iba pa na nasa NCR, iba pa rin ho yun. Kasi meron hong na-file baka sa NCR, iba rin ho ang nasa central office. So what is the total number, all in all, now pending? Ba based ho yung binigay sa akin, sir, it's 19. 19. Wh what is the yes, nature sir. of those cases? Uh, it varies, sir. Meron hong... Uh, uh, Karamihan po nito ay mga administrative charges, may mga grave misconduct, uh, meron po tayong mga... Ilan po yung mga cases that will require dismissal? For example, grave misconduct. If I may be allowed, sir, to look at the my, my list, sir. Are we talking about uh, yung ngayon current or yung remaining uh, out pa? Out of the po? 19. Out of the 19, okay. alam po ninyo ang importansya sa amin ngayon because we're, we're taking a good attention on the manner the funds of PhilHealth is being administered or being taken care of. So, isa po yan sa tinitingnan namin, ano-ano po ba yung mga kasong naisampa sa inyo? And, and we would like to believe that because the objective is it's very important na may saayos nga natin ang pondo. We would like and we anticipate CSC to be able to help us in being able to adjudicate all these cases in the soonest possible time. Madam Commissioner, yes, we're talking of the funds of the people. Yes, sir. We're talking here of an institution that takes care of about 200 billion pesos a year. Ngayon po kung may magsasampa ng kaso sa inyo, we don't suppose that you take your sweet time. Punto po ito eh. Kailangan po natin maisaayos lahat. Kanina po tinatanong ng chairman, I think it's very solicitous. Number pa lang, hindi na masabi ng attorney Ronquillo. May I debate a little more, Mr. Chair? Totoo po ba na nanggaling po sa CSC yung award ng isang key official that is responsible in constructing the database of field health at saka yung nagmamanage ng information technology. Ang Civil Service Commission po ang gumawa ng award na yon. Parang ang uh, ibig sabihin, talagang maganda ang database na nagawa ng field health. And the one managing the information technology was also awarded. Hindi ko alam kung parehong tao yon. Is it true that it came from the Civil Service? yung pagbibigay ng award na yun. Because later on, nagsalita po si President Morales na sabi niya, ang pinakaugat ng corruption dito ay dahil sa database is fragmented. So how do you reconcile the fact that you awarded those particular personnel managing the database of field health and the information technology when later on, the President himself na sinabi niya, Dito po nag-uugat eh. Yung database po namin fragmented, mali-mali. So how would you reconcile that award and the admission of the President of PhilHealth later na ito yung pinaka-ugat ng uh, pinagmumulan ng anomaly? Kasi nga ho, hindi nila maisaayos. Will you explain that? Commissioner Lizada. Thank, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman Marcoleta. Definitely not during my time. Kaya nga ho, I made the inquiry kasi gusto ko hong malaman. Definitely, hindi ho ako part ng commission na yan na nag-award sa PhilHealth. And if it were, and if there was any award, I would like to refer this to ASCOM uh, Ronquillo because I am not aware of any awards are being given. Honorable Marcoleta, During before, my time. Sorry, before you continue, Madam Commissioner Lisada. Yes, Chair. Yes. Ito pong umagang ito, supposedly si Attorney Ronquillo is representing the Civil Service Commission and Chairperson Bala. Is, this, is that not correct? Hindi po ba tama yun? Um, yes, Mr. Chair. I'll be straight to the point. Pasensya na po kayo, Commissioner, at hindi ko naman nilalahat. Pero meron po bang pagkilos o may galaw na isopress ang information dito sa investigasyon ng Kongreso at ng mga iba pang... Uh, 
opisina ng ating gobyerno? Sir, can you repeat your question? May suppression ba on? May suppression ba ng mga data? Kasi kanina tinatanong namin kay Attorney Riquillo, very basic, siya ang nagre-represent ng Civil Service Commission. Nung kayo po sumagot, binigay niyo lahat ng mga numero, meron po bang move sa loob ng Civil Service Commission to suppress information and not to give it to this committee? Please be honest, uh, Commissioner Lizada. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we had a meeting ever since lumabasto yung memorandum ng Presidente. Right away, we had a virtual meeting. And uh, yes, sir, may guidance po um, regarding yung concern nyo po. May guidance po. May guidance po na ano po yun? Huwag magbigay ng impormasyon? Um... Yes, sir. May I know uh, where it's coming from? It's obviously, Commissioner Lizada, sinasabi mo sa amin yung mga kaso, so it's not you. So where is that uh, directive coming from, uh, Commissioner Lizada? Uh, from the other member of the commission, sir. Uh, from the can, what? Can from... you be frank enough to tell us, Commissioner Lizada, kung sino po? Because you're a commissioner, and I could assume only one person can order the other commissioners and administratively supervise and control the other employees of the Civil Service Commission, and that is Chairperson Bala. Am I correct? Yes, sir. So, Mr. Chair, is it now correct to assume that the Chairperson of the Civil Service Commission is the one that is suppressing the information that should be given to us in this investigation? Commissioner Bala, the question is, is the chairperson of the Commission on Civil Service the authority ordering the Commission and the employees of the Civil Service Commission not to cooperate with us? Not to cooperate and to divulge information? Mr. Chair, is it directed to me? Yes, Commissioner or Lizada. As far as I can recall, sir, in the commission meeting, um, the guidance given to us is that... Uh, Who gave the guidance, see, madam? Who gave the, the guidance? Um, the chairman, uh, the chairperson, po. Okay. When you say the chairperson, chairperson Bala of the Civil Service Commission. Yes, Mr. Chair. The guidance given to you is to go slow on the information. Do not cooperate with us. Let's not divulge information and words like that. That is very clear, madam. I know you are a crusader. I know you came from LTFRB. And I, am, and I salute you for doing a lot of reforms in LTFRB. I think you are playing a good job now by cooperating, by cooperating with us. And by helping us, Commissioner Lizada, I would like to thank you for that. Um, Mr. Chairman, I say something. Before po kayo magsalita, nung nagsalita po si Chairman Bala na huwag kayo magbigay ng impormasyon at huwag kayo magsalita dito sa komite, marami pong nakaharap at marami kayong kasama? Yes, sir. Um, it was recorded as well. Marami ko, all the members po, nung sa, those who usually attend the commission meetings and other directors, sir. Marami so, nandun po. po yung mga commissioners, two commissioners, and the other, at yung iba pong mga directors as opesyalis ng Civil Service Commission. Uh, yes, sir. Um, bali, isa na lang ko akong commissioner na naiwan. The other one retired already last February, sir, this year. Okay, ma'am. Please, kung ano po yung gusto nyo sabihin? Um, yun lang po kasi when, when the president came out with this directive and uh, knowing how grand the uh, effect of what, what, what is happening, uh, I initiated po yung audit and yung inventory, which naman po uh, was taken well by the chairman uh, as to the list. And then I requested for priority on resolving of the cases na unahin ho nung muna yung mga RVPs and then the RVPs with other um, with other correspondents and the other uh, list cases na po. So, um, 
kagaya ho nung sinabi ni Congressman Mark Paleta na regarding the reward, uh, I have never been part and I will always stand by kung ano ho yung tama at totoo lamang. That's why I want to get down to the truth of it. That's why I'm asking for the inventory as well. So, um, yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have the best of intentions in, in asking uh, data within CSC. Ma and I believe it is our duty to do so. Mr. Chair, may I ask a few more questions? Go ahead. Commissioner Lasada. the other day, I think earlier in our investigation, we, we were asking about the competence and eligibility of the key officials of Peel Health. And at some point in time, uh, we came across of, I think, a policy in Peel Health that a salary grade 24 employee, government employee, with a specific relation with Peel Health, should have at least master's degree. And I think that was admitted by one of the officials uh, before us at that time. But Somewhere along the line, Madam uh, Commissioner, Peel Health asked the Civil Service Commission to waive that particular requirement to the extent that some of those key officials did not have master's degree. Number one question, did CSC really waive that requirement for and in behalf of those requesting peel health officials? And what is the reason for waiving that if that requirement was indeed waived? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, uh, Commissioner Lisada. Uh, we have on board the, our director, Rodolfo Encajonado, um, who is uh, in charge as well of itong tinatanong ni Congressman Marcoleta. I think he is in a better position regarding uh, qualification standards and uh, the policies issued pursuant there too. May he be recognized, Mr. Chairman? Uh, before that, uh, uh, Deputy Speaker Marcoleta, alam niyo ho, si Secretary Duque eh, nakatrabaho ko, hindi naman po yan lingkid sa kalaman ng karamihan. At uh, masakit pong itanong sa akin to, but I have to ask this question. Naging civil service chairman din po siya eh. Tama po ba, Commissioner Lisada? Tama po, Mr. Chairman. May connection po ba yung pagiging chairman niya dito sa pagpigil ng impormasyon na ibigay, na ibigay sa amin? ng Civil Service Commission? May connection po na ano, Mr. Chair? May connection po ba dahil sa siya po yung nagsilbi? Bago kay uh, Chairperson Bala, may mga tao dyan na galing PhilHealth and I'm sure konektado sa kanya. Ito po ba may connection sa pagiging dati niyang Chairman ng Civil Service Commission? Uh, sir, for the record, I, I do not have um, I do not have uh, direct evidence on whether meron siyang connection. Pero uh, going back po dun sa sinabi ni Astro Mariel kanina, which was uh, one of my concerns previously, um, a PhilHealth employee reviewing PhilHealth cases well with me. That's why I questioned it po. And then that's why tinatanong ko nga ho yung um, the propriety of uh, our lawyers former who were formerly involved or connected uh, with field health and uh, I looked at the disposition of the cases by the person so yun nga ho yung concern ko uh, I would like to address that as well but as to the connection sir yung sinasabi nyo kay former secretary Duke and uh, itong mga ibang cases po, uh, I do not have direct evidence on of that, sir. If there will be, because you are a constitu constitutional body, if there will be a legal action to be taken by Congress 
Commissioner Lizada, tatitindigan niyo po yung salita ninyo na ayaw magbigay ng impormasyon ni Chairman Bala at ayaw mag-cooperate dito sa Kongreso? Sir, that is the truth that was, dis uh, that was disclosed and the meeting was recorded, sir. The meeting was recorded at merong minutes nung inyong pag-uusap? Um, meron, sir, which is my point now. Kaya nga ho, uh, the minutes was supposed to Mr. be approved. Chair, we, we can request the, a copy of the minutes of that meeting for our reference. Sir, the, uh, sorry, Mr. Chair. That's why no, one of my concerns, I did not move for the approval of the minutes kasi ho, um, the declaration was not reflected in the minutes, but the audio says otherwise. So, that's why we're preparing our memo for the correction of the minutes, sir. There was a, an audio of the me meeting, but the minutes to be approved, tinanggal na po yun. Can you, can you tell us exactly what were the words of uh, Chair, Chairperson Bala? If my recollection serves me right, um, this information should not be made public um, nor should be given out to anyone who would be asking either in aid of legislation or investigation. Parang ganon. Yun ho yung matandaan ko, sir. Madam Commissioner, you are now in the process of correcting that and reflecting that those statements or phrases to rectify what really happened and that will be borne out by the minutes. You are now correcting that minutes, uh, Madam uh, Commissioner? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yun ho yung, uh, yun yung memo ko because when I read it, and uh, apparently it does not uh, uh, faithfully reproduce what was uh, taken up during the meeting. So, so what, is the, Sorry, what is the process, Mr. Chair, Madam uh, uh, Commissioner, in correcting that? As soon as you are able to suggest those corrections, who is going to approve that? Maybe somebody is going to disapprove the, the, uh, the correction. What will happen next? So far, dalawa lang ho kami ngayon sa commission, Mr. Chair. So it's ako ho yung mag-move for the approval of the minutes and it will be seconded by uh, the other member of the commission. So hindi ho yan mapafinalize or mapaformalize there is no motion for approval of the minutes, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, so there are no impediments for the correction of the minutes. And after the minutes is corrected, Madam Commissioner, the, the committee is requesting for a copy of that corrected minutes for our reference. Will you be able to do that? Yes, sir. Uh, Thank you. If it will already be carried out in, a, in a, another session meeting, sir. Thank you. Session suspended for one minute.
Yes. Hearing resume. Uh, Commissioner Lizardo. Commissioner Lizardo, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, kung maaari po sana, ma'am, pasensya na po kayo at lahat po ng mga guests natin sa Zoom at yung mga guests po natin dito sa plenary. Kung di pa po tayo naka-oath, ma'am, uh, we would have to administer the oath. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Comsec is uh, directed to kindly administer the oath. Maraming salamat. May I ask all the resource persons by Zoom and those in plenary to please raise your hand uh, please stand and raise your right hand do you swear to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth before this joint congressional inquiry to help you god yes i do thank you or yes uh congressman bersaga just a clarification do Commissioner Lazada, as well as Attorney Ronquillo, are they also confirming under oath the previous statements which they have already given before this committee? Commissioner uh, Lazada, can you kindly reply? Yes, Mr. Chair, I confirm. Salamat. Everything I said was the truth. Salamat po. Attorney Ronquillo. Attorney Ronquillo. Attorney Ronquillo, kindly unmute. Yes, Attorney Ronquillo. Kindly unmute, Attorney Ronquillo. Um... Uh, yes, Your Honor. Can can uh, can you repeat the question, Your Honor, please? Yung pong la, yung pong lahat ng mga binanggit nyo po kanina, uh, that is under oath. Do you confirm? Lahat po na statement nyo uh, na ito po under oath are uh, you are giving it freely to the committee? Well, if you are referring to the identification of a former pill health employee who is with us. Yes, Your Honor, I am uh, confirming that. Mabilis pong tanong, yung pong binabanggit ni Commissioner Lizada, may ganun po bang directiba na nanggaling sa inyong chairperson? You are now under oath, uh, Attorney Ronquillo. Yes, I am under oath and um, uh, categorically, I will say that I did not hear that guidance uh, being given by the chair. Wala pong um, ganun guidance? Wala ka din po nung meeting na yun? I was in attendance, Your Honor. Wala ka dun sa meeting na yun, Attorney Ronquillo? I am present in all of the commission meetings except if I am uh, sent elsewhere. But normally I am present in the commission meeting, Your Honor. And in all the meetings that I have attended, I did not hear the kind of guidance being given by the chairperson. Mr. Chairman. Congressman Bersaga. Well, in this particular case, kita naman natin, there are two conflicting statements coming from responsible officials of the Civil Service Commission, which happens to be a constitutional body. Ang sabi ni Commissioner Lesada, there was an instruction, although it was made orally, but it was recorded, and the instruction came from the chairman. Now, we are hearing a statement which is completely different and opposed from that categorical declaration of Commissioner Lesada. The statement of Attorney Ronquillo na hindi niya narinig yan during the board meeting. And therefore, one of them is not telling the truth. Kasi ang pinag-uusapan lamang natin dito, mayroon bang direktiba ang, ang chairman ng civil service na huwag mo nang i-release ang mga dokumento or suppression of the cases pending before the Civil Service Commission concerning pill health employees or officials. Sabi ni Commissioner Lesada, 
merong directive. Ang sabi naman ni Commissioner, uh, ni Attorney Ronquillo, wala siyang narinig. Just a clarification, Attorney Ronquillo. Yes, Your Honor. I did Ganong not hear that guidance. karami kayo doon sa board meeting? Ano po, uh, sorry po, hindi po masyado nadinig. Ganong karami kayo doon sa board meeting? Well, normally po, uh, the chairperson, the commissioner, myself as the assistant commissioner, the director of the Human Resource Policies and Standards Office, the director of the secretariat, and then if there are other directors who are called to participate in the meeting. So, uh, more or less, it's uh, um, six or more, uh, Your Honor. Ganong kalayo ang iyong kinauupuan mula sa kinauupuan ng ating chairman ng Civil Service Commission? Katabi ko po, usually si Commissioner Lisada during the meeting. At uh, hindi po siya gaanong kalayo. I'm sorry. Hindi gaanong kalayo. In, uh, you are a lawyer. Mga ilang metro ang layo mo kay, kay chairman during that Siguro meeting. Siguro po, madalawang ma dipa, Your Honor. Two meters, dalawang metro. And do you have any hearing problem? Wala po. Wala. So, we'll continue and pursue that later on, Chairman, unless there would be another motion. So, uh, the, there is a, would you motion to invite Chairperson Bala to... Uh, Mr. Chair, I think we should discontinue the interpolation insofar as the CSC's participation is concerned until uh, the Chairperson herself appears before us and clarify the statement given by Commissioner Lisada because this is a very disturbing uh, statement and we would like to give her due process. I think she's not present in the Zoom. We would like to invite her, if possible, to be present here in the plenary, Mr. Chair, so we can propound questions to her and clarify this very controversial issue. That hounds them. Thank I you, second Mr. the Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I be recognized? Yes, before we um, uh, act on the motion by the Honorable Marcoleta, duly seconded by the Honorable Barsaga, Commissioner uh, Lisada, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is not easy on my end. It's quite difficult, but allow me to refresh the memory of Assistant Commissioner Ronquillo. When the chairman gave the guidance, ang kausap niya po, and the one you can hear sa recorded sa recording message po, I si Ascom Ronquillo. She mentioned about a policy na isama sa uh, data sharing, and it was Ascom Ronquillo po yung kausap niya. And you can hear it from the audio clip. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yun lang ho. Thank you. Your Honor. Kasi Ronquillo, go ahead. As yes, uh, uh, Your Honor, the, the question was whether there, there is an order for the suppression of evidence. There was none. Uh, the instruction of uh, the chair was to ensure that this matter will be kept confidential uh, uh, from and not to be shared to the public, but will be shared uh, if needed in any of the investigations being conducted concerning the bill health. So there was no guidance to suppress evidence. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that the matter will not go out of hand by sharing the same in public prematurely. That's why, in fact, we have prepared all these cases. The list of cases uh, that are now in the hands of uh, Commissioner Lizada came from my office. And uh, the list of cases that we will submit to you, uh, to the committee, uh, Mr. Chair also came from our office and we include the summaries of all these cases for the accurate information uh, of everybody Atone about Rinkilio. the nature of all these cases Atone and Rinkilio. all the officials with the commission. Atone so Rinkilio. I categorically deny that there was an order to suppress evidence. Excuse me, Antonio Ronquillo. Uh, Antonio Ronquillo. Okay, Honorable uh, Marcoleta. Antonio Ronquillo, who deputized you? To represent PhilHealth? Yes. 
Your Honor? Who deputize you to represent the Civil Service uh, Commission, Attorney Ronquillo? Oh, civil Service. Your, uh, Your Honor, I was directed by Chair Bala to represent her in this, um, in this yeah, hearing yeah. because supposedly there is a commission meeting today at, at this very moment. So, the Chairperson of Civil Service Commission deputize you to speak for her. Is that correct? Yes, uh, Your Honor. Kasi kanina, let's go back to the earlier proceedings. Tinatanong ka lang ni Chairman Defensor kung ilan ang cases. Eh, Nag-aatubili ka eh. Your Honor, please, um, uh, my apologies. Hindi po sa ako'y nag-aatubili, but I do not have the, the exact figures with me. You were, you were deputized by the CNC chairperson but, but to speak for herself. You should have anticipated the kind of questions that will come from us. Pagkatapos mag-aatubili ka, tatanong lang namin kung ilan ang kaso. Did you not anticipate that that kind of question will be asked of you? You being the deputized person of the CSC chairperson? Uh, I'm I'm sorry for no, that no, because ganito we, lang ito we eh. Kanina pa nag-aatubili ka. Pertaining to qualification standards. Will you please hear us? Asking? Hear us out. Nag-aatubili ka kasi kanina pa eh. Evasive ka. Unlike Your Commissioner Honor. Lisada, direct and straightforward. Hindi ba le, Mr. Chair, alam mo, may may meron na tayong impression kagaya dito eh. Idi deputies ka mag-aatubili ka. Pagkita sa sabihin mo wala kang narinig. Anyway, we will give you your due, your day, day in court kung ano man ang gusto mong sabihin. Before As I act on the motion, uh, let me recognize the honorable Fortun. Honorable Fortun, would you like to react? The honorable law Fortun is recognized. Yes, Mr. Chair. Chair, just, just, uh, just one very quick question, Mr. Chair, for, uh, for uh, Commissioner uh, Lizada. Uh, Madam, uh, you said that uh, the meeting was recorded. Who has custody of the, of the audio recording now, uh, Madam Commissioner? Our um, liaison office for the CSLO. Meron hong ano, meron in charge yung secretariat po namin for the commission meetings, Mr. Chair. And uh, you were saying that the minutes uh, that you were able to gather uh, does not reflect the audio recording. Uh, do sa mga pertinent portions that I was waiting, wala po, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, in the light of the manifestations of uh, uh, Commissioner Lizada, I move, Mr. Chair, that the committee subpoena uh, the audio recording and the minutes of the meeting, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think that would uh, readily guide us. Uh, who's telling the truth here, Mr. Chair. And if the committee finds out that uh, indeed there was uh, guidance from the chairman not to cooperate with the investigation being conducted by the Committee on Public Accounts, I also move, Mr. Chair, that we cite the CSA chairman in contempt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. There's a motion duly seconded, but before we act on the motion of the Honorable Fortune, we first act on the motion of uh, the Honorable Mecureta, duly seconded by the Honorable Parsaga, that we will take up the issue of the civil service. Particular po yung sinasabing hindi pagbibigay o pagkocooperate sa atin by uh, uh, this Thursday at 1 o'clock. So, motion, there being no objection, motion is carried. The next motion is the motion of the Honorable Fortun Mr. to officially subpoena the audio recording and minutes uh, Civil Service Commission, particular po doon sa pag-uusap ng uh, doon sa hindi pagko-cooperate dito sa atin sa sa ginagawang investigasyon ng preso. Duly seconded, there be no objection. The motion of the Honorable Portun is by approve. Non, uh, Mr. Chairman, I was about to uh, ask uh, Mr. Chairman to... Honorable Fernandez first, go ahead. No, I, I was about to ask kung uh, together with the uh, subpoena ng uh, uh, audio, ay uh, kasama na rin yung transcript of records. Uh, nadinig ko naman po that uh, you were mentioning na kasama po yung minutes. So, uh, yun lang po, Mr. Chairman. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. So, the, the, the standing motion of the Honorable uh, Fortunista.
Pag hindi po pumunta rito at to shed light on it, that there, it, they will be sight in contempt. But we will not on, act on that motion until we, we are confronted with that situation. Donable Bersaga? Well, Mr. Chairman, I most respectfully move also that the civil service be directed to submit a listing of all the cases involving peel health officials together with the update and the corresponding status. COMSEC is directed to avail of the uh, documents pertaining to the cases of field health, past and present, uh, all the resolved and still pending cases within the Civil Service Commission. So ordered. Mr. Chairman. Honorable, Honorable Barbers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, tanong ko lang po. Uh, Posible po ba na humingi tayo ng uh, uh, copies ng mga uh, decisions made by the chair of the commission with respect to uh, field health? Uh, kasi maraming uh, okasyon na kung saan yung mga um, uh, requirements were adjusted to suit the request of the, the requesting official ng field health. So, gusto lang nating malaman for our education kung sino yung mga, yung mga uh, commissioners na nagbigay po ng ganong klaseng decision. Yung Tama po, Chair. Honorable Barbers. I agree with you. Uh, Comsec, kindly get all the, the copies of all the cases. Hindi naman po natin kailangan ng hard copy kahit yung soft copy mabigay sa atin para makita rin po natin yung nature ng mga kaso at kung paano decisionan. So, ordered. Honorable Bersaga. Uh, Magre-request din ako sa civil service. What are the qualification standards mm. for their senior managers, regional vice president, head of legal, and other various departments in the field health in order to find out whether or not there has been compliance with the comply qualifying standards provided for and imposed by the law pursuant to the, uh, under the Civil Service Commission. Thank you, Honorable Barsaga. Batay doon sa mga binanggit yung qualifications, Mr. minimum Mr. qualifications Mr. of Mr. those serving within the field health. Kumari po, uh, kunin din po natin sa CSE. So ordered. Honorable Mr. Macoleta. Mr. Chair, if I can only modify the motion of Congressman Barbers in getting all the list of cases, I think we should categorize them. The cases that were disposed, but appeal to the Court of Appeals or in, even in the higher courts and the case that are pending. Para makita natin, gaano ba katagal ang nagtatagal sa kanila bago nila i-resolve Yung na-resolve naman, subject to appeal, merong mag a sigurado dyan, para mas alam po natin, may screen natin lahat ng cases. Thank you, Honorable Marcoleta. The COMSEC is uh, guided accordingly. Yung mga naka-pending, naka-appeal, at yung nature ng cases nila. Particular yung mag misconduct cases, I think. Very and, then, and then by doing so, Mr. Chair, makikita talaga natin kung sinusupress talaga nila. Thank you. That's another matter. Yes. But you know, that, that, uh, the revelation of uh, uh, Commissioner Lisada is really very, very important. Yes. Thank you for yeah. that. Honorable uh, Barsaga. Well, this is on another matter related to suppression of documents needed by this committee. Actually, Mr. Chairman, na mag-umpisa pa lamang ang hearing, nakita natin na masyadong shocking ang mga detalye pertaining to pneumonia. And so, because of this shocking statistics, na si pneumonia, sa pneumonia, nagbayad tayo ng 13 billion, 700,000 ang cases, Although sa, PIL, sa DOH ay 400,000 lamang, I, re I requested that the claim records regarding pneumonia, dialysis, and OFW benefit utilization shall be presented to Congress. I was informed this morning by Dr. Bernadette Lico na willing silang ibigay sa akin yung data. Unfortunately, the issue is that sa akin lamang ibibigay at hindi sa ibang miyembro ng committee. And furthermore, pinapipirma ako ng PhilHealth 
ng mutual non-disclosure agreement na hindi ko pwedeng i-disclose. Kaya ang sinasabi ko, Mr. Chairman, eh hindi ko naman malaman kung bakit kailangang isurpress ang dokumento. Sa katunayan, Honorable sa Bersaga, data... Mabilis lang po. Pinapapirma kayo ng non-disclosure agreement? Yes, this one. <laughs> Mutual non-disclosure agreement. So hindi ko ma-share to sa aking kaibigan na si D.S. Marcoleta. Sino po ang gumawa niya? May I know who uh, gave the document to Donald Barsaga with a non-disclosure agreement? Dr. Bernadette Sino po? Dr. Bernadette Lico. She is the one always giving the documents to us. Mr. Chairman, since yung sinasabi po ni uh, uh, Congressman uh, Barsaga is non-disclosure, can we uh, subpoena those documents to be submitted in this? No, uh, uh, wait, wait, uh, <laughs> Honorable Fernandez, that is not the case. Uh, those documents should be supplied to us and no individual member of Congress should be made to sign an undisclosure agreement. Honorable That's Bersaga, my, please yes. continue. That's my point, Mr. Chairman. Kaya siguro sabihin, po, sabihin niyo na po, Mr. Congressman uh, Bersaga. Malinaw naman, nasa Section 13, Paragraph F, ng Data Privacy Act of 2012, the processing concerns such personal information, ang exception is that when it has to be provided to the government or public authority. And this is not the first case na nangyari ito sa PhilHealth. Noong nagre-require ang dokumento sa PhilHealth, ang isang abogado pertaining to the names of those involved sa dialysis, nag rin ang National Privacy Commission granting the request of a private lawyer. Kaya hindi ko malaman, eh kung lahat ng government agencies na hinihingi natin ng record, pati ang pangalan ng mga taong nag-claim, ay hindi maibibigay under the Data Privacy Act our constitutional mandate to conduct investigation in aid of legislation would be useless. It would be meaningless. Kaya gusto ko lang malaman sa PhilHealth, Sino ba ang abogado ng PhilHealth na nag-advise na kinakailangan kong pumirma sa mutual non-disclosure agreement? At dito sa mutual non-disclosure agreement, yung data ang hinihingi ko is only for me. I cannot share it with the other members of this committee. Will anyone from legal kindly reply? Attorney Del Rosario. Ngayon lang ako nakarinig na investigasyon at uh, nagkakaroon ng non-disclosure agreement. Kanina sa, sa Civil Service Commission, ayaw ibigay yung informasyon. Ngayon naman, nagbibigay ng informasyon, may NDA. Honorable uh, Rimulya. Mr. Chairman, is Attorney Del Rosario present in, in Zoom? Yes, Honorable Rimulya. Yes, Mr. Here. Chairman, good morning. Attorney De Rosario, you recognize? Yes, sir. Uh, I did not give that uh, advice. I am no, I uh, was put under preventive suspension since last week, so I have no knowledge of that uh, particular incident. And uh, it has been my position that uh, all documents that are being re being requested by either House and by the law enforcement agencies should be given to give way to a uh, thorough investigation of all issues concerned. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Attorney Labe, would you know anything about this? Mr. Chairman, it did not pass my office because uh, the instruction from the PCO Morales, all documents requested in, all, in both houses should be given in full effect without non-disclosure agreement. We understand that, of course, the Congress can summon any documents. Okay, uh, before you continue, surprised. sa ating mga kasama, alam niyo naman po na si President Morales may sakit ho, no? hindi makakatagal. But at any rate, uh, he's now with us. If we can recognize uh, the President and Chief Executive Officer of PhilHealth, General Morales, magandang umaga po sa inyo. Uh, good morning. Yes, uh, General, yung pong uh, binanggit ni Honorable Barsaga, Meron daw po mga dokumento na ibinigay pero ito po ay pinapapirmahan sa kanya under a non-disclosure agreement. Uh, 
it might be a uh, an oversight uh, mr chairman because uh, but it does of course it does not cover uh, requirements of the house of the congress or the senate or any government agency because i issued instructions that we will be open and provide all documents necessary for uh, uh, any government agency but uh, i think that is applied to uh, some requests for individuals and uh, government organizations for uh, documents from Thank you, General Morales. So, klaro po to. General Morales, I know that you have limited time. Uh, kamusta po kayo? I'm glad to be here, uh, Mr. Chairman, to be able to participate and contribute to this effort to improve peer health. Maraming salamat po. Kamusta po ang inyong kalusugan sa ngayon, uh, General? I'm being prepped ho because I'm going to uh, schedule a chemo session this Friday. So, I'm preparing for that. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. Uh, Opo. Uh, on behalf of the committee, General Morales, uh, we will be praying for your uh, for your uh, recovery. Uh, we will take this opportunity, General, if you don't mind, habang nandito po kayo, alam po namin limitado ang inyong oras. Uh, gusto ko po munang i-recognize si Honorable Ace Barbers kung may katanungan po sa PhilHealth. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, um, uh, I was told that uh, I will yield the first slot to Congressman Ron Salo. If uh, he's not yet here, I can go on with my questions. Yes, because I was worried about your time. You have another committee hearing, but I can go to the Honorable Salo. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I will yield uh, the first slot to Congressman Ron Salo. Honorable Salo is recognized. Thank you very much, Chairman. In as much as you already called uh, Congressman Ace Barbers, and as much as he has a meeting, as I understand, uh, I will respectfully yield to him. So I will go ahead. Okay, maraming salamat, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, ang aking pong uh, katanungan, uh, umpisaan ko muna dito kay uh, si Attorney Del Rosario. Attorney Del Rosario, uh, you're here, no? Attorney Del Rosario. He was here earlier. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I was uh, having problems with uh, How are you Mr. feeling Chair, today? Magandang uh, magandang magandang. Congressman Barbers, good morning, sir. Okay. Uh, are you okay? Okay ka ba matanong ng mga konting tanong, uh, ano, uh, attorney? Okay, lang, sir. Uh, my BP has uh, stabilized, but I'm monitoring it. So okay. Thank you, sir. Sige. Uh, ilang taong ka nang uh, nasa field health? Sir, since 1998. So that's uh, almost uh, 22 years, more or less. 22 years. Uh, yes, sir. When did you pass the bar? Sir, I passed the bar in 2016. I took the bar in 2015. So, may I know, uh, attorney, kung saan po yung inyong undergraduate uh, course? I uh, studied at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. I graduated in 1995. I took my uh, uh, law studies at the Polytechnic, Polytechnic Technic University of the Philippines, College of Law, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, salamat po. Uh, tanong ko lang, uh, Ano yung, what was the position that you were appointed to that was rejected by the Civil Service uh, Commission before? Yes, sir. When I was appointed as Regional Vice President, the CSP invalidated my appointment based on uh, lack of uh, training, uh, managerial training, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, since during that time, the uh, CSP has implemented uh, five years uh, uh, requirement na dapat yung training mo ay within five years from appointment. But uh, that was already uh, uh, modified by the Civil Service Commission, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, after that, anong position that was given to you in the field health? Uh, after, the, after my appointment as regional vice president, I was uh, appointed as uh, senior vice president. So from SG26 to SD28, Mr. Chair. So what year was this? Uh, my appointment as SPP was uh, April of 2019, uh, Mr. Chairman. Bakit? Uh, kasi when you, I remember when you were asked in the Senate, you said that uh, you assumed the position in January of 2016. Ano ba yung totoo? January of 2016 
or uh, 2019 of July? Ano bang uh, totoo dyan? Uh, I don't remember yung January 2016, Your Honor, but uh, I assumed as OICSBP of the legal sector on July 2, 2018 as officer in charge when the uh, when the SBP then uh, you, uh, filed a legal absence. You don't remember when you assumed as SVP? You don't remember the no, sir. year? I apologize, Your Honor. But my, what I'm trying to say is I remember uh, assuming as OIC SBP in July 2 of 2018. So you were never appointed as SVP nor took uh, the position as OIC of uh, the legal <coughs> department in uh, January of 2016? No, no, Your no, Honor. Okay. So, uh, the reason why I'm asking this uh, is because I'd like to get a clear picture, Mr. Uh, Chairman, kung ano yung, uh, kasi SVP legal, napakabigat po na position yan. And uh, yes, I think, uh, ang kailangan ho dyan, ay meron pong uh, legal experience. May I know if you have any legal experience, uh, prior to holding or upon appointment to that kind of position, uh, attorney? Uh, as, I, as I have stated uh, in the previous hearing, Mr. Chair, I don't have any uh, experience as a lawyer uh, uh, as far as litigation is concerned prior my assignment to the Office of the SVP Legal. Oh, pero, di and, po, uh, pero hindi po ba nakapagka SVP Legal, dapat ay meron kang minimum number of years legal experience, di ba? Uh, tama ba ako doon, attorney? Uh, sir, based on the qualification standards approved by the Civil Service Commission, the SVP position requires five years managerial experience. There is no, uh, uh, there is no uh, so, requirement as to managerial legal lang ang kailangan, hindi kailangan applied, legal experience. Kasi, alam mo, yes, SVP, and anyway, I will not belabor that point. Babalikan ko na lang mamaya yan. Ano? Uh, gusto ko lang malaman, uh, who was the president then when you were, when you were appointed as uh, SVP for legal? The president then was uh, uh, Dr. Roy Ferrer, but it was not him who appointed me. It was the PhilHealth Board, Mr. Chair. Who? Who appointed you? The the PhilHealth Board, the Phil Board of Directors yeah, of, of course. the Philippine Health Insurance. Definitely, Office. your your appointment will be ratified by the board, correct? But who? The president has a role and has has something to do with your appointment. So you're not saying Dr. Roy Ferrer has nothing to do. Are you saying that Dr. Roy Ferrer has nothing to do with your appointment? Uh, no, sir. Uh, since the Personal Selection Board for Third Level Officers, he is one of the members. Are you so fraternity brothers with uh, Dr. Ferrer? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. Are you fraternity brothers with Dr. Ferrer? Uh, no, sir. I just came to know Dr. Ferrer when I was uh, uh, when he was appointed as board member, uh, I think in 2018 or 2017. I, I don't know exactly the... Okay. I don't okay. remember exactly the year. And when I was assigned to Davao, he's also from Davao. So uh, we met a few times in Davao. Okay. Salamat po. Uh, the reason why, as you may be wondering, Mr. Chair, why I'm asking all these questions to Attorney Del Rosario. Uh, simple lang po kasi ang gusto ko sana pong ma-establish. Because there is a striking uh, similarities no, in the two cases that I am about to, to discuss and ask uh, questions on. Ito yung, quest, ito yung kaso dun sa Accenture at saka yung bagong kaso sa Balangiga, uh, sa Balangiga, sa Balanga, Bataan, no? Wherein money supposedly uh, of PhilHealth went to, uh, deposited to another account, no? And in these two incidents, Mr. Chair, ang uh, striking similarity dito ay yung personality ni Attorney Del Rosario. He was there in the uh, in the Accenture uh, issue. He was also there in the Balanga Bataan issue. Now, I would I'd like to go into a little bit of the details, Mr. Chair. And yan po si Dr. Banson, uh, Mr. Edgardo Banson. Before, before you go there, Attorney uh, Congressman Barbers, uh, you said you did not want to pursue and belabor that question, which should have been pursued with vigor. For example. Attorney Del Rosario justified his being hired because he had managerial experience. Because you were asking him that 
it appears that he has no legal experience yet because he is only, what, uh, how many years as a lawyer? 2016. Shall okay, 2016. So for a position of senior executive vice president for legal, he's sort of saying that his deficiency is supplied by his managerial experience. Did you not want to ask him what managerial experience did he has in the past? What, what company did he work for to at least justify his managerial experience? Attorney De Rosario, can you please apprise this committee how good you are in, manager, in managing a corporation? What corporation did you work for to uh, justify your managerial ability and be fit to be Senior Vice President of Legal for Peel Health? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, when I was, uh, uh, I, I assumed different uh, managerial positions at Peel Health, uh, Mr. Chair. I was a uh, manager of corporate communications for, I think, more than a year. I was a uh, manager of our physical resource and infrastructure, infrastructure department. I was manager of the contribution accounts management department. I was manager of the information technology management department. I was senior, I was branch manager of NCR South uh, operations of Bill Health. I which was company, regional vice president. Which company are you one. working for I in was those managerial vice abilities? Of Bill uh, Health Region 11. So Oro, I was also. Oro. Prior to that, I also have supervisory experience as Excuse division me. chief of the uh, corporate planning department. Excuse I was me. also a supervisor when I was assigned as. Uh... Can you please stop for a while? We are expecting that you will be able to explain to us how many corporations, for example, did you work for? Ang siya sabi mo puro pil health eh. Ang pinagsasabi pong mga departments eh, you have not. You have not exposed your ability to head all these departments. Anong may pagmamalaki mo, for example, dun sa information technology? To make us believe that you are competent enough to manage that information technology. Sabi nga ng president ninyo, ito nga yung ugat ng pinagmumula ng anumali eh. So okay, you tell us, naging manager ka ng maraming departamento, does that give you a justification of your managerial acumen? Yes, I believe so, Mr. Chair. Since the selection board has uh, endorsed my application, and for the record, they did not only apply for the position of SPP for legal. I applied for three positions. So it was the selection board and ultimately the PhilHealth board that decided on my application. Don't you think now, it is uh, for this committee the, to the, decide? The CSE has already validated uh, my appointment based on the qualification standards uh, approved by them. Okay. So I don't think it's fair to... Uh, 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 to malign my person because of uh, your opinion that I am not qualified uh, for the position. We are not honor. making an With opinion of you. We were asking you to justify the managerial acumen that you are telling us that have supplied your deficiency in your legal, in the legal issues here. Ngayon, sinasabi mo that you are qualified, but that is your own opinion. Somebody, for example, this committee, will be in a position to assess and evaluate you. And I think uh, from this, uh, I will allow that, Mr. Uh, Congressman Barbers the to records, continue. We have already Thank submitted you. to the House of Representatives the records of the accomplishments of the legal sector. And uh, you will see that uh, during my limited time in PhilHealth, the number of investigations increased, the number of resolved cases increased, and uh, loopholes, the loopholes that were identified in the policies were plugged. Okay. So, uh, uh, so uh, uh, I think uh, you just have to look into the records, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm not. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, excuse attorney, me, attorney. Excuse Mr. Me. Chair, uh, Attorney Del Rosario, magintay ka lang ano sa sinasabi mo. Uh, you are opening a can of worms now, ah. Pupuntahan kita mama yata ng natin yung sinasabi yeah. mong uh, napakarami mo nagawa sa pill help. Uh, Limita dupo kasi ang oras namin kaya as much as possible iklian mo yung iyong sagot. The reason why yes, I wanted to establish uh, and ask you those questions, kasi nga po, uh, isa sa mga nakita nating uh, loophole or flaw doon sa pagpapatakbo nitong uh, PhilHealth, eh, mukhang wala hong mga legal basis yung uh, mga desisyon na ginawa ninyo. No? Example, yung IRM, we were asking you, anong legal basis nyo? 
Unang-una, interim reimbursement mechanism. E reimbursement dito, ba't kayo nag allow ng cash advance? So dapat, yung SVP Legal would have given a, 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 an opinion and perhaps even stop the implementation of such. No? Anyway, uh, let uh, Congressman Marcoleta deal with you on that particular issue. Babalikan ko lang uulit yung uh, sa Accenture. Uh, nandito ho ba si, Doc, si Mr. Edgardo Banson, uh, Mr. Chair? Mr. Banson? Is Mr. Banson around, Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Banson, uh, former president. That's correct. Yes, yes. Uh, he uh, sent letter. Uh, if possible, he will be attending this Thursday. Uh, because okay. uh, he's now with the, uh, ADB, Asian sure. Development Bank. Do you have any more questions to Attorney Del Rosario? Um, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Uunahan ko nga sana po si Mr. Si Attorney Minerva Retanal ng NBI Anti-Fraud. Nandito rin po ba? Go ahead. Si Attorney Retanal ng NBI Anti-Fraud, uh, Mr. Chair, nandito rin po ba? NBI is recognized. Is this uh, the same NBI on Accenture? Mr. Chair, si Attorney Retanal was the one tasked to investigate the Accenture. However, uh, when they started investigation uh, during that time, they faced a blank wall, a blank wall because they were given uh, the reason that due to the Data Privacy Act, they cannot get any information out to feel help. Para po sa informasyon ni Congressman Barbers, nandiyan din po ang Accenture sa Zoom. Ah, okay. So, Mas okay, let's start first with the uh, NBI. Attorney Retanal, nandiyan po ba kayo? Kindly unmute, Attorney. Attorney Retanal, please uh, narrate to us your entire participation in the investigation of the Accenture? Tony Retanal. Mr. Chair, wag niyo po ibawa sa oras ko, ha? Uh, kung gusto mo, tanungin na muna yung Accenture na nandyan. O kasi kay Attorney Retanal talaga tayo. Mas magandang kay Attorney okay. Retanal because we might be again given, be given the runarounds, Mr. Chair. Kaya nga gusto sana natin malaman uh, from uh, the NBI, ano ho yung uh, naging resulta ng investigation? Nakaiba yung nakapag-investiga o hindi? Si uh, former President uh, Basa is there. Siya din yung sa Accenture case. Uh, Ito na, si Attorney Retinal. Attorney. May naririnig ako eh. Parang siya nga yun. Go ahead, Attorney Retinal. Sino yung Accenture? Anyway, uh, nandiyan niyo yung Accenture, no? Uh, wala mukha, kasi importante, oh, very vital, Mr. Chair, yung uh, statement that will be uh, disclosed to us by the NBI on this particular case. Kasi nga, oh, uh, apparently, wala hong nangyari sa investigation nila. And that is what we want to find out. Now, I was given by uh, Congressman Barsaga a copy of a Field Health Board Resolution Number 1643, Series of 2012. No, this is the resolution approving the financial statement, uh, settlement. Sorry, proposal of Accenture, Citibank, and Metropolitan Bank and Trust Company involving Accenture Incorporated premium contribution remittances for the months of October 2010, December 2010, and February 2011 to September 2011. Meron hong pinasok na settlement. Ang tanong ko, ho, ang PhilHealth Board ba allowed to engage in a settlement uh, uh, case, uh, Mr. Chair? Tony Labe. I'd like to defer the question to Attorney Jojo Mangawang, the Corsac po. Attorney Mangawang is recognized. 
And Attorney Mangawang, you're the Corporate Secretary? Uh, yes, sir. I'm sorry? I, yes, um, Sir Congressman, I'm the Corporate Secretary. And you're familiar and you have knowledge about the Accenture? Uh, I was not yet uh, with the Office of the Corporate Secretary at that uh, time. Attorney, sorry, ho, ah. hindi, hindi ko kayo masyado marinig eh. Uh, sorry, Mr. Congressman. I was not yet the corporate secretary at that time in 2012. So you're not familiar with the action, Chair? I'm not familiar with the facts of the So, Mr. Chair, uh, ang tanong ko lang ho kasi, number one, allowed ho ba under the, the field health charter na makipagsettle ng ganitong klase? Kasi ang nangyari ho ganito eh, yung supposedly uh, field health contributions ng action, Chair, ay naideposit po isa isang banko sa Batangas sa Metro Bank. Eh ang ang tanong ho diyan, kaninong account ho na deposit? Number one. Pangalawa, kung may investigation, obviously there was a violation, no? And uh, in fact, I was told that this is a criminal offense. Set third question, may nafailan ba ng kaso ang legal department? ng, uh, ng uh, PhilHealth. Uh, Before you proceed, uh, at Congressman Barbers, Attorney Retanal, are you there? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Good morning, Your, Hon uh, good morning, Your Honors. Yes, uh, I am here uh, listening. Although, there's some tech, uh, some tech problem here for us sharing our video. Okay, uh, anyway, while you're fixing your video, uh, the Honorable Barbers will be propounding questions to you. Go ahead, Congressman Barbers. Uh, what is, what is uh, surprising in this uh, resolution of the board, Mr. Chair, is that PhilHealth agreed to a settlement of 95% daw of the total amount. The total amount involved here is 114 Sorry, 118, uh, 114 million pesos. And they settled, they made settlements, they agreed on a settlement na 95% lang yung babayaran. In other words, may 5% dito na hindi nawawalang pondo. Sige po, Congressman Barber, siguro, Attorney Retenal, can you kindly appraise us ano ba tong kasong to at bakit po kayo na-involve? Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, this investigation um, involved NBI on November. <clears throat> it all started with the initial request for investigative assistance by PhilHealth sometime in 13 December 2011, which was handled by, uh, which was through Attorney Deb, David Gabriel, a corporate counsel of PhilHealth addressed uh, this complaint or investigative assistance request was handled by our then Computer Crimes Unit under the Anti-Fraud Division. The main aspect of the said request is for the investigation on PhilHealth's IT system, considering that in the routine verification made by their Treasury Department, in the conduct of reconciliation of accounts of accredited collecting agents, balance showed that there were postings made after said reconciliation, which created suspicion on their part. It appears that the payments of member corporation, uh, in this case Accenture, were diverted and that a possible intrusion in Phil Health's IT system was made as cover up. Ma'am, klaro lang Another po, no? request. Ma'am, meron pong mga bayad yes, sa PhilHealth na galing sa Accenture na parang ginalaw yung IT system na dadivert yung pera. Um, sir, what, initially, during the reconciliation, it was found that there's a float item amounting to 114 million However, these items were not actually received by PhilHealth. Uh, it was a suspicion because why will it appear in their database when in, in truth and in fact, PhilHealth did not receive 
any of this amount. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Attorney, sandi, uh, ano lang, uh, para, lang ma, para lang clear. So, nag, it appeared in the, in the IT of PhilHealth that there was uh, 114 million uh, that uh, was deposited, deposited in favor of PhilHealth. Tama po ba yun? No, sir. There is the float item of 114 million uh, allegedly uh, for the account of Accenture, but in their reconciliation, such amount was not received by PhilHealth. In other words, uh, in paper, may na-receive, but in actuality, wala pong na-receive. Tama po ba yun? Yes, sir. Parang oh. nag appear po sa IT system that there's that particular amount, but in actuality, there's no such amount received by PhilHealth. Okay. Please go on, okay. uh, attorney. Yes, sir. Um, subsequently, a request for investigative assistance was received also by NBI in, on January 2, 2012 from Attorney Ronaldo Modesto Ventura in behalf of Accenture Inc. regarding the company's contributions to the PhilHealth Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth for 10 months totaling about $114 million, which although reflected as paid in the PhilHealth Information System have supposedly not been remitted into the bank accounts of PhilHealth. Um, would you know, attorney, to whom the money was uh, deposited in uh, Metrobank? Do you know the account name? Um, Your Honor, because uh, of the prohibition under the bank secrecy law, I am not authorized to disclose in this session uh, the names and account numbers of of what we discovered because of that prohibition under the law. I understand, Attorney. Pero, kapagkakalang uh, Congressman Barbers, Attorney, ano po yung prohibition? but hindi nyo ma-disclose? Sir, under the, uh, the bank secrecy law po. Yeah, but in bank secrecy law, hindi naman po to savings eh. Diversion ng pondo po to. May public funds eh. And these are technically no, sir, public uh, funds, uh, Attorney Retinal. Sir, um, sir, what, what Congressman Barbers propounded is the bank accounts in Metro Bank. Because that's another aspect of the investigation. Um, supposedly, the the unremitted payments of Accenture was related to RCBC collection agents. However, the Treasury Department has said that there's no amount reflected in the under the RCBC savings bank collection. Uh, with respect to the Ma'am, Attorney Retinal, Attorney Retinal, sorry po, ah, simply na lang po, meron pong yes, contribution si Accenture, supposedly pumasok kay yes, PhilHealth, na divert sa mga accounts. Tama po? Um, sir, um... Mr. Can Chairman, may I uh, 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 Yes, Attorney Retinal, kindly reply. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. The investigation disclosed that um, the payment supposedly intended for Fair Health was made by Accenture through its drawing bank upon, upon their issuance of a check. The upper said check um, apparently was uh, delivered to an uh, to a branch of PhilHealth and was issued a receipt. However, upon verification, the 
aforesaid receipt to issued by PhilHealth is fictitious. So okay. no crediting of that particular payment was made to PhilHealth because of the uh, fictitious so, official receipt. Okay, Mr. Okay. So, Chairman. So, uh, aklaro ko lang ho, ah. May bayad sa PhilHealth, duman sa banko, nag-issue ng check yung banko, yung check din sa PhilHealth, nagkaroon ng receipt ang PhilHealth, pero peke yung receipt. Tama po? Yes, sir. Okay. Nakakuha po ang accenture ng resibo for their payment, pero apparently, that receipt is fictitious. Thank you, ma'am. Hindi po siya issued ng PhilHealth. Thank you, ma'am. Honorable uh, Dan Fernandez. Maiti lang to, uh, Congressman Barbers. Mangyayari talaga yan, Mr. Chairman. Kasi nga, yung payment system ng uh, PhilHealth, eh hindi naman po siya regulated, hindi siya, hindi siya supervised by uh, uh, Banko Central. Na kung saan, yung sa ating National Payment System Act, eh hindi nga nag-comply uh, ang PhilHealth. Kaya, anong nangyayari dyan? Bara-bara ba sila eh? Talagang mangyayari yung pag, uh, pagkawala nung pera. Dahil nga sila, parang sila ay on their own. Para silang sarili nila banking system na kumbaga, control nila yung uh, sistema nila, walang nagre-regulate sa kanila, walang nagsusupervise sa kanila, at hindi sila allowed by uh, our national uh, government like yung ating Banko Sentral para mag-operate ng kanilang payment system. Kaya, yung mga ganitong klase sitwasyon, Mr. Chairman, eh, asahan natin mangyayari hanggang ang pill health ay hindi nagko-comply sa sinasabi ng batas under National Payment System Act, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, um, Honorable Fernandez. Uh, quick interjection by Honorable Bersaga. Just a clarification. May nabanggit na naman na data privacy law. Unang-una, ilang cheque ba ang inisyo ng Accenture? Ilang cheque ang napaisyo ng Accenture for that amount of 114 million. Isang cheque ba lamang o maraming cheque? This question is addressed to the lawyer coming from the National Bureau of Investigation. Attorney Retinal. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, we've, we've discovered what particular check uh, which covers 10 months uh, totaling 114 million. That's for 10 months premium payment of Accenture. Isang check po lamang for 114 million. Sir, it would appear initially uh, Ilan po? 32? No, sir. Uh, that's because our investigation focused on one check only, initially. And that one check is only for, is already for the amount of 114 million? Yes. And the check, I assume, is payable to PhilHealth? PhilHealth. And were you able to retrieve a copy of the check in the sum of 114 million para malaman naman natin kung kanino napakredit sapagkat it was not credited to PhilHealth. Yes, uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, we've investigated uh, the dorsal portion of that apposed check wherein it is indicated um, wherein an account number was indicated were indicated. Uh, was indicated. Uh, yung bank account number and na disclose? And that account number. Oh, hindi. Sir, I'm uh, sorry po. Go, go ahead. Uh, the bank account number and the uh, owner of the account. Go ahead. Sir, um, as I said po, um, there's a limitation for us with respect to the uh, bank secrecy law on, on the particular account. However, yun po yung um, that is cover on the check and we've made a leap out of it. Um, then and we discovered uh, several accounts also where the where the money uh, were credited as well. 
Honorable in one Barbers. particular bank. No, ang ibig sabihin po, isang cheque na deposito sa isang bank account tapos kinalat pa sa ibang account. Congressman Barbers, kaya hindi continue. Yeah, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Kasi uh, nakakatakot ho ito dahil uh, apparently uh, when they do, did the tracing of the money, it ended up in a Metro Bank account somewhere in Batangas. Alam niyo po pangalan, Congressman Barbers. Uh, th that's exactly what I want to know because wala pong report na binibigay sa uh, natatapos ang PhilHealth at uh, ang NBI. That's the reason why, Mr. Chair, uh, perhaps si Attorney Retanal would know no, kung kaninong account na punta ito. Hindi, And, binabanggit ni Attorney Retanal, meron daw bank secrecy law kaya hindi niya ma makuha na. Uh, ang mga, but, Congressman Barbers, ito po yung kaso within PhilHealth. I have it here with me. Administrative this case, uh, ito po yung Accenture Anderson Consulting Philippines. Tama po ba, Congressman Barbers? Ito po yung case ito, Tony Labe. Would you know? Mr. Chair, I just joined PhilHealth last year. Okay, ang nakapirma dito si Ms. Peña. Sino sa Human Resources? Kay Vice VP Mas? Ang kaso po nila is uh, grave misconduct, gross insubordination, gross neglect of duty, at uh, dinismiss lang po sila. Neglect of duty ang kaso. I'm sorry, Mr. Balgomero was acquitted. Simple neglect of duty. Ang nadismiss po ay tatlong tao. Ramirez, Visconde, Manlangit. Yun nga, Mr. Chair, eh, 114 million pesos na pera ng taong bayan ang involved dito and simple neglect of duty lang ang uh, ipinasa. What is also scary at nakakatakot dito, Mr. Chair, I don't know if it has something to do with the case. No? Apparently, yung tinraise nila yung pera, napunta sa isang uh, banko sa Batanga, sa isang uh, Metro Bank branch doon. And in this, that same branch, dalawang empleyado ho ang namatay. I don't know if this is related. And if I were to conclude and per perhaps uh, uh, relate this to the story of uh, Congressman Argel Kabatbat, eh parang may pattern. Parang may pattern. Di ba? Uh, may namamatay. So I don't know if the deaths were somehow related. But uh, again, no, um, talagang kailangan makita ho natin ano yung punot dulo nito at nasan yung pera. Kasi bukod do doon, Merong settlement silang ginawa eh. And uh, this board resolution authorized them, the PhilHealth, to agree to a 95% settlement. Bakit kayo makikipag-settle? Pera nyo ba yan? Pera ng taong bayan yan eh. Hindi if, kasalanan if... ng taong bayan na dahil sa, sa kalokohan nyo ng PhilHealth, na-divert yung pera somewhere else. And then ngayon, kung babawiin natin, sasabihin natin, oh, sige, payag kami, 95% na lang. Eh, anong klaseng polisiya ho yan? And that's why I started with my question dun sa SBP legal ninyo. He should have given legal opinions and legal basis on this particular policy. Ang dami niyong abogado dyan eh. Kayo yata ang pinaka-top heavy na organisasyon, uh, government and owned and controlled corporation sa buong Pilipinas eh. Ang dami niyong doktor, ang dami niyong abogado, ang da dami niyong CPA, and yet all these things are happening. Attorney Retinal, ano pong update sa kaso ngayon? So hindi niyo na po matrace kung kanino pumasok ang pera at kung saan po mula doon sa isang account na yun, kung saan pang mga accounts kumalat? Um, yes sir, Mr. Chair, if I may be allowed to uh, state some antecedent facts uh, for your uh, permission. Go ahead, po. Uh, with respect to the death uh, mentioned by uh, Congressman Barbers, it is one the um the incident uh, was found out by our office during our investigation that a former bank employee who resigned from Metro Bank was killed sometime in, in December 2011. And uh, upon Chair, our attorney, investigation... Excuse me po, Mr. Chair, pwede ba natin ma-request makita yung, uh, uh, yung ganda ni attorney? 
retinal so that we can uh, communicate properly. Tony Retinal, there's a special request from the Honorable Barbers, if you can be on video. Mr. Chair, Mr. Yes, Chair, Mr. Chair, pwede bang malaman uli kung magkano yung hinahanap na pera ni Congressman Barbers? 114 million. 114 million. 114. 114. Mr. Chair, puto po yung hinahanap ni Congressman Barbers kasi po sa Cardinal Santos Hospital, 240 million po ang inihingi, hini, ang, ang kinukuha ng PhilHealth. Ang sinetel po nila, 70 million. Ang hahanapin ko po mamaya, 170 million. Pero mamaya na po yun. Salamat po. Salamat, Honorable Marcoleta. Uh, Attorney Tenal, you may continue. Uh, sir, um, medyo may technical problem lang po kami with our camera. But... Nonetheless, um, yes, the death of a former bank employee was somehow interrelated with the, with the case of Accenture and uh, that of uh, Bill Health. Uh, related, na relate, kumbaga, sa pieces of puzzle po, we were able to correlate those incidents, some incidences relating to the issue of Bill Health. The bank employee, when we did our investigation, um, was uh, killed by a riding in tandem as per the police report on the matter. And then when we do the background check of that particular employee, we found out that he is the former distributing clerk or in charge of the check clearing. Uh, within the within the bank or that particular branch of the bank in Batangas. So, ano pong status ng kaso ngayon? Sir, yung death, death po kasi niya, uh, the family did not pursue anymore any investigation. Oh, not the death attorney. Uh, itong sinasabi niyo, yung bank employee connected dito sa Accenture. Pero ano na po ang status ng case mismo? Because I, I now have with me, and I'll give this to the Honorable Barbers, I'll give a copy. Dito sa loob ng Philips, meron palang recent lang, no? So 2012 to nangyari, 2011 nangyari to, 2019, may pinirman si uh, General Morales yung uh, acquitted, si Roman Balgomera. But anyway, ano hong status ng kaso? Dito po sa uh, pera. To the NBI, um, it was uh, the case was uh, archived because of the absence of complaining witnesses from PhilHealth, Accenture, and Metro Bank because of their as an offshoot of their uh, amicable settlement. Absence the uh, absent the complaining witnesses. So, um, ang filial to ang Metro Bank, Accenture. Siyempre, oh, sabi niya na karong compromise ayaw ng pula in pursue yung case, but that should have been pursued by PhilHealth. Correct. So anyway, uh, ito, uh, Congressman Persaga. Yes, simply lamang ang tanong natin sa PhilHealth, kasi naririnig natin sa National Bureau of Investigation. Walang complaining witness. The complainant in this particular case would be PhilHealth. At pangalawa, alam naman natin that the CB, that the CB liability is separate and distinct from the criminal liability. Kahit na nagkasundo sa CB liability, the criminal liability would still exist. Kaya Amo. hindi namin alam kung bakit nagkaganto ang asuntong to. Attorney Mangawang, is that correct? Nasa board ka po? Hindi niyo na ito pinurso? I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, I didn't hear the... Huh? Is that correct? Hindi niyo na po pinurso itong kaso ninyo regarding Accenture? Uh, based on the records, sir, no more... Uh... Based on this? Based, uh, based on the records, based no the more. Records, based on Kaya the board resolution nyo nakalagay na in view of the settlement, hindi na kayo magpapail ng kaso. Ang linaw-linaw dyan, sa last paragraph, 
and Congressman Barbers yeah. will read the last paragraph of the resolution. Go ahead, Congressman yes, Barbers. Uh, Ito, um, Mr. Chair, no, nakalagay po dito doon sa last paragraph. Resolved, finally, that field health management is expected to continue with its efforts and coordinate with the various government agencies to hold the perpetrators of this nefarious activity accountable and liable to the government. Anong ginawa nyo? Mr. Chair, I will, I will just check the records on... Uh, the attorney, uh, I hope you don't mind. Pwede bang, kasi hindi ko... Ano, eh. Ayan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I will just check the records if of any action made by the board after this July 19, 2012 resolution. Oh, this is 2012, this Mr. Chair. But very clear <coughs> dito sa kanilang board resolution na papanagutin yung mga, na mga nagkaroon ng pagkakasala dito, both administrative at criminal. At dapat liability. lang naman, 114 million pwede na palang dukutin sa isang kumpanya, <coughs> hindi ipasok sa PhilHealth, Aayusin sa accounts na kung sino-sino, pababayaan na lang nila. Tony Mangawang, please reply. And to add insult to injury, Mr. Chairman, settlement sa public funds. Kailan pa naging nagkaroon ng settlement yung public funds? Pero ba na, pera nyo ba yun? Yun no, first, na attorney, uh, Congressman Barbers, yung pagpursu ng case. Huwag na natin sabihin na nag-aaway si hmm. PhilHealth against Accenture. Yung pagpursu lang ng case criminally, against the bank, against the field officials, nandito po sa akin, tapos na ho yan, hindi nyo na ho ipupursu. Attorney? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I came in as corporate secretary only in October 2017. So, uh, from then on, I have not heard of any uh, update on this last paragraph on board resolution. So, I will have to check with the management. Attorney Labe, kung sino man nakakalam, mm -hmm. you know, it's easy to check the legal head and who were involved here, we just go to the internet, alam na namin, but please, kung sino nakakalam sa inyo, reply now. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Attorney Lim Siako, Attorney Labe, Dr. Pargas, wala. Mr. Chairman, uh, okay. konting uh, interjection lamang po. Kasi yung ganyang kalaking pera na nawawala sa paid health, uh, wag nilang sabihin na kadadating lamang nila bilang bagong board member. Eh, very glaring yung kasong yan. Kahit sabihin natin na 2012 yan at uh, nagkaroon ng uh, ganyang uh, settlement, it is incumbent upon the uh, wise wisdom of the board members to act on it. Di ba? Lalo na yung legal uh, sector ninyo, si Attorney Del Rosario. Dapat tinignan din naman nila, di ba? Wala Attorney, na sabihin na dahil nakaraan na, wala na tayong pakialam. Is Attorney Del Rosario still in Zoom? Attorney Del Rosario? Yes, Your Honor, I'm here. Yeah, go ahead, Attorney Del Rosario. Ano pong status nitong kaso na to? At sa, nung uh, nag-assume kasi ako, sir, ay merong turnover yan ng uh, mga pending uh, from the uh, previous uh, SVP. No? So the, this uh, item was uh, not included in that uh, particular turnover. And uh, nagsabi na rin ako minsan sa ating corporate secretary to uh, check kung ano yung mga mga pending instructions ng ating board no, para ma-actionan. Ma ma I think they're doing that. So, from time to okay. time, the uh, Office of the Corporate Secretary actually issues a uh, directive to management uh, requesting for updates of uh, board directives. But Attorney, I'm not uh, Attorney saying that Rosario, uh, particular uh, issue on Accenture. At, Attorney Del Rosario, uh, pagkaklaro lang po. Yes, sir. Ang kasong niyan, hindi tinurn over sa inyo. Uh, it's not, it was not part of uh, what has been... Uh, Sige po, hindi po uh, siya tinurn over, uh, over sa inyo. No? Kasi ang, ang lumabas dyan, uh, the case was already terminated dahil meron na pong mga convictions, uh, administrative nga lang. But uh, meron dyang pending na uh, investigation. Katorni De Rosario, on. simple question, simple so, question. Wala po yan sa tinurn over sa inyo? Hindi yes, kasama? Yes, wala pong... Uh, Doon sa inventory ng mga investigations that uh, uh, were no. turned over sa atin, yeah. wala pong uh, directive na ganyan. Uh, Kaya nga po, attorney, no, attorney, a very simple question. Was this part, was this case part of those turned over to you as head of legal? Sir, yung 2018, nung 2018, wala po. Yung directive okay. ng board na yan, so, I've never seen that. Attorney, simple lang po. So, hindi po na turn over sa inyo to. 
Yes, sir. Okay. I, I, I've, I've never seen a copy of that the board resolution. Thank you. Humingi ka ng Directive for Attorney Mangawang. Attorney Mangawang, anong aksyon mo doon? So we asked the management to report on uh, uh, directives uh, given by the board, but this uh, particular uh, directive was not made part of those uh, report or update. Made eh, sa'yo na nga napunta. Sinabi na nga ni Attorney oh, Del Rosario, okay. officially humingi siya ng directive sa'yo. Bumalik ka naman sa management, humingi ka ng kung anong aksyon nila. Ano ba to? Mr. Chairman, alam mo, kitang-kita naman na nagsisinungaling itong mga to eh. Kasi alam nyo, kapag... Uh, no, uh, no, no to, be, to be fair, to be fair, no? Kasi siyempre, pag takeover ni Atty. Asuncion, binigay yung papeles. Uh, turn over. Hindi, hindi daw na turn over sa kanya eh. So, he was asking Atty. Mga Wang the Board for a directive. So, parang ako, anong action naman? Okay, uh, first, Congressman uh, Barbers and then Barsaga. Uh, uh, gusto ko lang pong anihin, i-emphasize, Mr. Chair, na nung time na nangyari itong sa Accenture, kasi may issue about the IT, ang head nun was Atty. Del Rosario eh. So, dapat siya, being, yeah, so, bilang head, dapat siya <laughs> nag-imbestiga nito. Mr. Chairman, ayan, kitang-kita na po natin ang pagsisinungaling. That time pala, siya pala ang head noon. So, alam na alam mo yung problema, Atty. Del Rosario. But ngayon, parang uh, naglulugas kamay ka na hindi tinurn over sa iyo ang isang bagay na in the first place, alam mo na. Congressman Bersaga. Uh, uh, wait, Atty. Del Rosario. Congressman Bersaga, you want to say something? Ang uh, tanong ko lang, Mr. Chairman, para malinawan. Sino ba ang nagbayad sa settlement? This involves a very big amount. Sa tingin ko, hindi Accenture. Sino ang nagbayad? Attorney Mangawang. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would not know who paid the 95%. Huh? I would not, I do not know who paid the 95% of the total 114 million. Kasi sinasabi natin, 95%. Ang tanong namin, sino ang dapat magbayad based on your board resolution at pangalawa, Ito ba ay nabayaran? Do you have Mangawang? an official receipt regarding already... the payment for that 95% representing more than 100 million? Oh, eh may settlement nga kayo. Tinatanong namin, sino ang magbabayad? Mr. Alam, Chair. Mr. Chair, Chair ah, Teka lang ho, pasagutin muna natin, Attorney Mangawang. Sino daw nagbayad? Hindi mo rin alam. <laughs> uh, sir, based on the uh, based on the board resolution 1643 series of 2012, the proposal came from Accenture, uh, Citibank, and Metro Bank. Kaya nga ang tanong namin, sino nagbayad? At nabayaran ba ang dapat ibayad? At may resibo ba kayong binigay? Bumalik ba yung pera? O, balik na naman tayo sa hindi nyo alam kung nabayaran o hindi. <clears throat> Another striking uh, issue here, Mr. Yeah. Chair. I so don't know. there is no clear indication who paid who, what paid what. Wala. Attorney Mangawang, wala. Uh, based on the uh, resolution, Mr. Chair, it does not appear who paid the uh, 108 million, but it only states that this is to be taken as full settlement of Accenture's diverted premium contributions. Congressman Barbers, last question. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Mi Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Chairman Alvarado. Uh, mukhang si attorney ay nagbabasa lang ng uh, mga minutes ng kanilang mga meeting. Mukhang uh, hindi alam ni attorney talaga yung uh, tunay na pangyayari, Mr. Chair. Pero siguradong meron namang isa dito sa mga invited guest natin ang present nung uh, nagbayaran yan, Mr. Chair. Baka mali tayo ng tinatanong. Baka dapat natin itanong sa Treasury Department. Because tama, tama. Oh. They are the Mr. ones Chair, in charge uh, of the collection. Pwede bang ang pasagutin natin ay uh, ang isa sa mga finance officer ng uh, PhilHealth? Mr. Lim Chacos, recognized. Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, maybe we can, with due respect, Mr. Chair, maybe we can invite uh, Senior Manager Banji Rasilis, who during the time was the manager of the Treasury Department. Mm. Uh, to shed light on the concern about uh, Accenture, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Kalagay na nga yan sa agenda natin na pag-uusapan. Tinanong na sa Mr. inyo. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead. 
Mukhang nagtuturuan na lang yung mga taga PhilHealth dito, so, Mr. Chairman. Okay, at, 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 Mr. Dibshaco, without, we're not saying kasama ka. Alam mo ba yung nangyari dito? Hindi. Uh, hindi po, Mr. Chair. Hindi, hindi po ako kasama during that time, Mr. Chair. Honorable Barbers, uh, can we request PhilHealth to give us the position paper, including Attorney Retenal, to give us yung mga binanggit niya dito uh, so that uh, at yung mga involved po, no? yung binanggit nyo si Treasurer, Attorney Mangawang, uh, Head of Legal, uh, Attorney Del Rosario, yung kanilang mga affidavit tungkol dito sa particular na kaso na to. Go ahead, uh, yes, sir. Uh, clarification lamang. Sorry, Chairman Barbers. Isabit nyo rin ang dokumento kung sino ang nagbayad together with the date of payment and together with the official receipt. Magagawa nyo ba yun? Because the payment should be made pursuant to the board resolution. That's correct, yeah. Gusto lang namin malaman, nabayaran ba? Sino nagbayad? Nag-issue ba talaga ng check eh? Eh baka hindi na naman pumasok to sa pill health account. So it's useless. Honorable Barsaga, para lang ho official lahat. Huwag na tayong humingi ng kanilang, kanika nilang affidavit. Uh, if we can subpoena the documents from the NBI based on their respective affidavits and all documents in field health pertaining to this case. Would that be a fair uh, uh, subpoena, uh, Honorable Barsaga? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Provided and that be submitted not later than tomorrow because we have a hearing on Thursday. Yeah, provided, yes. Mr. Chair, also okay. na hindi fictitious yung resibo. Ah. Yes. So, uh, the ComSec, oh, there's a motion to subpoena the documents pertaining to Accenture uh, coming from the NBI and the PhilHealth. Uh, pinapakusapan po namin kayo, kumari niyo ibigay sa amin lahat ng opisyal na dokumento. Huwag na ho kayo magsulat ng inyong sariling affidavit. I-submit niyo lang yung mga opisyal na dokumento na nasa inyo. Uh, the, uh, if there are no objections, the ComSec is hereby ordered to subpoena the uh, documents mentioned. If I may continue, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, pending the submission of the field health on those documents that we subpoenaed, uh, pupuntahan ko na ho yung isang uh, kaso, yung balanga naman po. No? Kasi it seems that there is a striking similarity dun sa modus operandi ng, ng, ng Accenture at saka itong, itong balanga. However, ang difference lamang po dito, eh, yung field health ay magbabayad ng services rendered by B. B. Brown B. Brown no? On May 2 to 22, 2019 The Balanga Rural Bank in Balanga, Batan Received 12 payments From PhilHealth Intended for B. Brown Dialysis Center The total payment that went into the bank account Was 9.7 .9 million Upon discovery Attorney Del Rosario Allegedly instructed Attorney Roger Pocallan The Senior Manager of the Internal Legal Department To accompany the involved IT employees and quietly settle the scam on September 29, 2019. Dalawang empleyado po ng PhilHealth, si Ms. Dr. Edita Coniel at saka si Mr. Jerome Folante uh, paid 49,000 pesos from their own pockets to pay the bank charges imposed by the Balanga Rural Bank before the money can be transferred back to feel health. Ang ibig mo sabihin, napunta po sa isang instead of directly feel health paying directly to B Brown in their own uh, uh, account, it went temporarily detoured. Yung pera nagdetour muna sa isang uh, rural bank. So I don't know kung naibalik ba yung pera yon, na isettle baka naman isettle ulit ito ng 95%. So Isa yun sa mga... Pero yan, Honorable Barbers, ang kaiba naman yan, mula yan sa PhilHealth, papunta sa B. Brown. Papunta sa B. Brown, uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. So, andyan naman B. Brown, kung gusto natin tanongin. Sige, pwede po bang matanong yung uh, B. Brown? May, may request the representative B. Brown. Uh, ito po yung uh, branch din sa Bataan. Bataan, yes. Uh, B. Brown? B. Brown's recognized. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, B. Brown uh, sent a letter today. Uh, na hindi sila pwede. Kahit Zoom wala. 
Siguro, Mr. Chair, si Attorney Del Rosario na lang to give us a clarification on this, a background on this particular okay. case. Attorney Del Rosario. Attorney Del Rosario. Bang uh, pumapasok si Attorney Del Rosario sa ah, Zoom. Ay, sorry, sorry. Naririnig na po ako, sir. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, sige. Go ahead. Attorney Del Rosario, oh, go ahead. Chairman. Opo, yung uh, nangyari po na yan ay uh, meron po yung uh, investigasyon na hinawakan ng ating uh, uh, meron yan committee na kinreate no, for that purpose. And uh, during that time of the investigation, I was already on leave. So if I may uh, request uh, the our corporate counsel, Attorney Lape and Attorney Roger Pocalian, they are online, to shed light on that. No? Wala po tayong uh, uh, kinalaman dyan kung ano man yung uh, uh, Attorney Pukalan is recognized. Attorney Pukalan, please. Andito, si Attorney. At Attorney Pukalan. Sige po. Bakit ka nandiyan sa likod? Totoo ba, Attorney, na you were instructed by Attorney Del Rosario to send two of your field health employees to uh, the rural bank in Bataan and settle yung, uh, char yung uh, penalty charges of 49,000. Totoo ba yan? Pakitanggal niyo po Good morning, your honors. Good morning, okay, go ahead. Uh, Sige, Mr. Kahit, Chair. Sige, kahit hindi na po tagal, malakas ang boses niyo. Uh, hindi po, uh, there's no truth to that uh, allegation, uh, to that uh, statement. Actually, it's the president, it's with the permission of the president and CEO to meet uh, the representatives to meet the officers of Balanga because our objective in going there is to recover the 9.7 million. No? Kasi gusto ni, nagpapalitan lang po kasi ng letter eh, yung uh, Land Bank, PhilHealth, Balanga. So since uh, willing din naman yung Balanga to return, subject nga lang sa payment of the Fees. Convenience fee of 49 Sino po. Sino po nagbayad doon? Sino nag-shoulder ng fees? Sir, ay yung mga employees po, kasi talaga naman sila yung may kasalanan. Ah, so, bakit meron po pong nag admission na itong mga employees na ito, si Dr. Edita Conel at saka Jerome Polente, admitted? Yes, yes that po. That they were at fault kung bakit na-divert sa Balanga Bataan Rural Bank itong pera? Kasi sir, sila po yung mga responsible ano eh. What, mga... what, what was the admission of these two personnel? Sila po sir kasi yung uh, responsible personnel po sa pro na sila, na sila po yung nag uh, click or nag uh, so in other effect words, nung transfer po. In other words, Mr. Chair, uh, sinasabi nyo, attorney, na may involvement itong dalawa kung bakit na-transfer yung pera dun sa, isa, sa rural bank o bataan. Meron na sir pong findings din ang ating prosecution department. Nagkaroon kasi sila ng preliminary investigation na uh, pinpointing na nga po yung dalawa. Congressman That's... Barbers, with your permission, kumari po masubmit sa amin lahat ng official documents tungkol dyan. In fact, the Honorable Barbers requested that uh, last time. Last Wala time, po yeah. bang nasubmit sa amin? Uh, sir, meron po kaming sinubmit pati po yung certification from Land Bank na naibalik na po sa account ng PhilHealth okay. yung 9.7 okay. million. At least at least Mr. Chair na ibalik, no? Opo. Ang tanong ko, kanino pong bank account sa Balanga Bataan pumasok yung 9.7 million? Is he Service a PhilHealth employee? Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Honorable Remulia. What's this gentleman doing walking around and taking pictures? Sino po sila? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Um, kanino pong bank account pumasok yung pera na 9.7 million sa, batang, sa Bataan? Uh, sir, sa demand deposit account po ng Balanga, napunta yung 9.7 po. Kanino? Kanino? Bala, sa demand deposit account po ng Balanga Rural Bank po. But you should know, kaninong account name? account number. I'm sure you know that. Sa ano da sa ano daw sir yon? Sa base po sa uh, investigation, sa account po mismo ng Balanga po. 
Balanga, Balanga Rural Bank po. Teka, teka. Uh, uh, ano, please educate me. Napunta sa account sa isang branch sa Rural Bank sa Balanga, yung PhilHealth Money. Tama? Sa demand deposit account po ang tawag nila doon, na nasa Banko Central, parang reserve po siya, sir, ng uh, Balanga, na nasa Banko Central po yung... Uh, my, my question, Mr. Chair, is bakit pumasok sa isang rural bank? Ba't hindi pumasok sa land bank? Wala ba land bank sa Bataan? Actually, sir, yan yung... Meron niya yung ongoing uh, investigation niya din po dyan. Uh, Nakapending na po sa ating uh, Corporate Legal Council yung... Uh, Uh, investigation report. So, doon po natin makikita po kung sino yung mga responsible pong personnel na nag-cost po ng uh, erroneous crediting. With your indulgence, so, Honorable Barbers, uh, Attorney, baka po pwedeng ma-supply nyo kami lahat ng mga dokumento tungkol dyan, uh, including yung current investigation ninyo. Uh, yes, basically, sir, ito namang questions na to, including the, uh, the problem with Accenture are all Uh, problems within, yung pong kung may naglalabas ng pera, at syempre, yung IT setup ninyo dyan. Uh, Congressman Barbers, if you can wrap up, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, actually, yun nga nakakapagtaka eh. Uh, all this money, supposedly, uh, would have been deposited to PhilHealth uh, Depository Bank, which is land bank. Eh, bakit papasok pa ho ito sa isang account na rural bank. So, malaking question mark po sa atin yon sa ating isipan. And, uh, again, no, uh, I was told also, Mr. Chair... Congressman Barbers, pwede bang magtanong lang? Kapraso lang. Doon pa sa rural, rural bank ng uh, Balanga, ay uh, merong mga tinatawag nating mga supplier na uh, may account doon yung mga nang nanggaling sa PhilHealth. Actually, gusto ko nga po sanang tanungin yung B. Brown kung ginagamit ba nila as their depository bank yung, yung rural bank na ito. Exactly. Kasi nakakapagtaka naman kung bakit doon babaksak yung uh, pera ng walang account number sa account name. At uh, kanina, sinasabi ni attorney na ginagamit niya yung uh, central bank. In the first place, wala nga kayong authority sa central bank eh. Wala kayong uh, regulatory sa supervision galing sa Central Bank. Kaya don't, you have your own system existing on your own without the supervision of Central Bank. Kaya nga illegal yung ginagawa niyong pagbabank transfer eh. Dahil wala kayong otoridad galing sa national payment system. So ngayon, don't use the Central Bank na unang-una ay hindi kayo binigyan ng karapatan na mag, uh, mag-transact. Kasi yun ang una yung violation. Okay, so Honorable Barbers, uh, we will just get the documents from uh, the Balanga Bank and uh, if I may... Last na lang po, Mr. Chair, last uh, point. Sige po. Um, kasi I was just uh, informed, I don't know if there's some relation, ano? Kaya nga, I wanted to ask sana personally uh, Mr. Uh, Banson because the owner, the president of the rural bank is named Rosario Banson. I don't know if there's a... There's a A link, no? I'm just being malicious here, uh, Mr. Chair, as advised by Congressman Marculeta, that uh, <laughs> na merong, merong, merong kasing, ano eh, uh, you know, big question mark talaga, baano napunta sa isang rural bank? Hindi naman po yun yung banko ng B. Brown eh. Pangalawa, I was just informed that uh, the owner and president of this rural bank was a certain Rosario Banson. Who know, is connected to? Or kapilido or, 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 or related lang. So, in the meantime, sa, uh, pending the submission of all these documents that we subpoenaed, yes. Mr. Chair, so I will uh, uh, stop here and Thank you. allow uh, our colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Honorable Barsaga? Uh, Sususuga ko lamang yung mga itinanong ng ating kasamang si Congressman Barbers. Attorney Del Rosario, Mr. Rosario. Yes, sir. Na-appoint kang head ng legal way back in 2018. Uh, uh, 2019, sir. Is, ano po? OIC po noong 2018, sir. Okay. 2019. At ang yes, sabi sir. mo kanina, nasa Pilhil ka mula noong 1998. Opo. That's correct, Mr. Chair. At bilang head ng legal, siguro bilang kapwa-abogado, 
alam natin na ang procedure, pag tayo ay naapoint, nakakaroon ng turnover ng mga kaso ng PhilHealth. Tama yes, po sir. ba? Opo. Okay. Noong araw ng linggo, nabasa ko sa pahayagan na nagkaroon ng leak sa opisina ng PhilHealth for Region 1 na ang opisina ay nasa Dagupan, Pangasinan. Yes, sir. Yes. At mayroon ding impormasyon na binigay ang isa kong kababayan na dating naninirahan sa Dagupan at kanyang tinek sa akin at ang sinasabi niya kung pidi maraming kasong falsification ang pill health dyan sa Dagupan. Can you confirm or deny this allegation na may mga kasong falsification pal before the fiscal's office o sa osgado sa Region 1? Sir, merong uh, uh, sa pagkakaalam ko po, uh, this can be confirmed by the Regional Vice President of uh, PhilHealth Region 1. Uh, he is online. Uh, ang pagkakaalam ko po, meron pong mga naisang pa sa, sa Department of Justice pertaining to uh, fraudulent claims. Uh, at uh, ito po ay hindi uh, ko lang po alam kung ano na po yung development, whether this is now with the RTC or still with the Department of Justice. So the RBP of uh, Region 1 can uh, give you more accurate updates on that uh, Note, uh, Mr. Del Rosario, on the basis of that information, nag-research ako. At yes, nakita ko yung isang hospital na sa Red Hospital ay nag-file ng kaso sa PhilHealth. Civil case on the ground na apat na tao ang gumagamit ng kanilang mga invoices kahit hindi nakakumpain sa hospital. Alam mo ba ang mga kasong to, Attorney Del Rosario? Yes, sir. May yes. mga ongoing cases po na sa okay. Red. But uh, this, um, sa pagkakaalam ko po, the cases are with the, uh, I think, with the Arbitration Office of PhilHealth. No, I don't okay. have the documents right now. Uh, but uh, Attorney J. Villegas is on the line din po. You can ask him. At nag uh, nakalagay din sa press release na lumabas sa Inquirer, on June 19, 2019, na isang pasyente ay nagkaroon ng limang klaseng cancer. Cancer of the ovary, cancer of the cervix, cancer of the colon, cancer of the breast, at saka cancer of the brain. Natatandaan mo ba itong case na to? Uh, you might be referring to, you must be referring to the uh, case of uh, Elirin Sarate, uh, the, the employee that has been dismissed by the Office of the Ombudsman uh, pertaining uh, to fake ba? cancer claims. Na yung si Elirin Sarate nakapag-claim para sa kanyang ina o ama ng limang kasong cancer. Cancer of the ovary, cancer of the cervix, cancer of the colon, cancer of the breast, and cancer of the brain. Aside yes, of the legal. Think, opo. Ang pagkakalam ko po, yung fake cancer po, but I'm not uh, uh, privy to what cancers yung uh, uh, kinlim, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Ang binabasa ko lamang yung aking nabasa sa Philippine Daily Inquirer. Honorable Barsaga, ano pong hospital yan? Nazareth. Ah, Nazareth, opo. So, uh, may madaming pending cases po yan sa inyo sa Philhealth. Tama ba, Attorney Pokalan? Attorney Pokalan, dito na po kayo maupo. Tama po ba? Go ahead, Attorney uh, Congressman Barsaga. So, at this juncture, Mr. Chairman, unang-una, hihingin ko kay Attorney Del Rosario ang update dito sa mga kasong to, especially doon sa kasong falsification. Alam ng bawat isa sa atin that in cases of falsification, para makombik ang falsifier or the author of the crime, ikakinakailangan na ipresent sa usgado yung falsified document. E ang maging problema natin, yung mga falsified document, kung nabasa na at hindi na mabasa and readable, definitely the case will be dismissed. Honorable Bersaga, we have, I think, documents in the central office in Nazareth. 
About Nazareth. Kasi nakita ko po yan na nakalagay sa central okay. office Just case nila. Just a clarification kay Attorney Del Rosario. Yung bang mga dokumento pertaining to falsification ay nasa central office in so far as the claims ng Nazareth ay involved? Yes, sir. Kung uh, uh, pertaining to the cases of Nazareth, uh, intact po yung mga documents natin. And uh, I think the PhilHealth Region 1 has already given the, a statement also that uh, no document was destroyed in that uh, uh, incident of uh, uh, a leak, water leak in, the, so, in their office, Mr. Chairman. I would, re I would just move, Mr. Chairman, dadalhin lahat ang mga dokumento pertaining to these issues, to what I have stated and mentioned, most especially the pill health payments to Nazareth Hospital, including thank the you. records of the civil case filed by Nazareth against pill health. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Barsaga. Quick interjection, Congresswoman B.H. Congresswoman B.H., May tatanungin lang ako kay Atty. Del Rosario from the last time because siguro nandiyan din sila Dennis Mas. Dahil na-observe ko po um, dun sa kanina, since kailan po siya naging SVP head ng Region 1? Hello, ma'am. Yeah, Nag when were you Region head ng Region 1? Uh, ano, ma'am, twice po. Noong 2013, uh, I think that's January uh, of 2013 to June, and uh, I was again uh, reassigned to PhilHealth Region 1 in, I think, uh, August of 2015 uh, until uh, April of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, April of 2018 when I was transferred to Davao. Okay. Kasi, Mr. Chair, doon sa pinakita nyo kanina na listahan, it seems na yung Region 1, maraming COVA disallowances from the 2013, 2015, 2016, 2017. Um, so, nagtataka ko, and that's what I want to ask Atty. Del Rosario, um, it seems na napakalakas mo sa board na ikaw ang na-appoint na SVP chair because despite the fact that your region had a lot of disallowances, you did have legal experience, and then yung point system yata, may parang you're parang 50, and then the one next to you is 80, 80 points or 50 points, and yet, ikaw ang na-appoint. Why, why is that? Why do you think you were chosen by uh, the board? Ma'am, the, these allowances are actually the pertains to uh, benefits being given to government, uh, to field health employees. And uh, these policies uh, come from the central office. Uh, so the, the, these allowances uh, that are applicable to field health region one is also applicable to all other regions, kahit po sa central office, no, pertaining to these allowed benefits. Ngayon, uh, I don't know about the uh, my rating uh, pertaining to the ranking during the deliberations of the selection board. But uh, as I said earlier, I applied for three positions and uh, the board has uh, deliberated on those uh, positions. Po. So, hindi po tayo malakas sa board. Uh, I firmly believe that uh, uh, the appointing authority was uh, convinced that uh, I was the best uh, candidate for the position among the applicants. Your Honor. There was an issue that was um, released yet last year, Yata, that the hmm. building of PhilHealth, na nililis ng PhilHealth, was um, yes, that yes. of Secretary Duques. Is that correct? Uh, the issue is uh, the building is owned by the family of Secretary Duque. Uh, for the record, the PhilHealth has been staying the, there since 2012. And uh, the alleged, the, the contract na pinirmahan ko po ay... Uh, uh, yung kapirma po doon na sinasabi nila na ako ay ang nakapirma po doon hindi po si Secretary Duque but uh, was Attorney Gonzalo Duque. No? So it, during the time I understand that the Secretary has already divested uh, his interest on the company, on the uh, family corporation. But you were uh, of the lease agreement? Ikaw ang pumirma ng lease agreement since 2013? It, is that correct? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, kasi ma'am, yung 2013, pitong buwan lang ako doon. Uh, I think it was already uh, assigned by the other RBP. Uh, in 2014, uh, hindi pa ako nakapirma. 2015, uh, uh, hindi rin ako kasi late na yata. Late na ako, no? nag-assume doon. So 2016, 17, and 18 po, uh, most pro yun po yung sigurado ako ako yung pumirma. And uh, yun po yung uh, uh, nangyari doon, uh, 
at uh, as far as I remember na po, uh, the secretary has already uh, divested no, dun sa kanyang interest dun sa family corporation. So wala naman sigurong kinalaman yung pag-term up. Kasi 2018, you were already um, reassigned but you're still the one who signed the lease agreement? Uh, no ma'am, ang ano po doon, ang basis po nila doon, uh, the notar notarization was done when I was already in uh, Davao City. But I assured the committee that uh, uh, I, I signed that document when I was still the uh, regional vice president of uh, PhilHealth Region 1. You so, know, wanted to ask SVP De Luzar if he thinks hindi naman to award or reward sa no. kanya nagiging signatory ng lease agreement considering that you have legal experience, you have a lot of disallowances, and your point system was way below that of your competitor nung nag apply ka ng trabaho. Yun lamang, Mr. Cheryl, I, I, I'm happy na sinasabi mo na you don't think it was that. Um, yun lang, Mr. Definitely, Cheryl. Thank you. Definitely to... no, uh, madam. Thank you, Honorable uh, Congresswoman Bernadette Terrera D, Congresswoman BH. Uh, kanina ako na pag-usapan na yung ospital na sinasabi ni uh, Honorable Barsaga, yung Nazareth. Uh, nandito po yung tatlong ospital na nandito sa atin. Butuan General Hospital, Our Lourdes, uh, Lourdes of uh, Quezon City and Cardinal Santos. Ngayon o, uh, yung binabagit kanina ni Honorable Barsaga... Ito po yung settlement ng uh, Cardinal Santos from uh, Yes, ma'am, good good, uh, good afternoon po, ma'am. Uh, may I now recognize the Honorable Barsaga to propound on this uh, particular issue. But this was the case of uh, I mean, the Honorable Marcoleta uh, on this case. Pero ito po kasi Ang lumalabas dito ho ay, if I'm not mistaken, mga multiple claims uh, in, uh, during this case. Uh, yes, the Honorable Marcoleta is recognized. Marami salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Yung po kasing PhilHealth, noong 2011, and I'm borne out by certain records here, demanded the amount of 240 million from Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Anybody from our resource persons, Mr. Chair, who can confirm that? Okay, let me just clarify. Yung Cardinal Santos po na kausap natin ngayon was not the same Cardinal Santos at that time, on 2011. I have here the records of Car Cardinal Santos uh, I think that time, Mr. Chair, Cardinal Santos was managed by a certain Hospital Managers, Inc., it's MI. Hospital Managers, Inc. Yes. Okay. If we can request uh, the current management of Cardinal Santos, ma'am, go ahead. Sige po. Uh, Honorable Chair and uh, Honorable uh, Congressman uh, Marcoleta, this, this is uh, Pilar uh, Nenupa Almira. I'm the current president and CEO of Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Uh, entering my personal appearance and attendance in this meeting. Mr. Chair, mamaya ko na tatanungin yung SMI sa PhilHealth muna. Yes, sa ano po tayo? Uh, go ahead. Uh... Totoo po ba na in 2011, meron po kayong uh, demand sa HMI, which was then managing uh, uh, Cardinal Santos, in the amount of 240 million pesos dahil sa pag, uh, pagsisiyasat niyo, meron pong uh, tinatawag na under deduction of something like 3,000 pesos across a membership of something like 48,000. So that is the basis of your demand. Tama po ba yun, Mr. Pilhelp? Pilhelp, kahit sino po sa inyo, Pilhelp? 
There seems to be a very silent position on the part of the PILAD. Pero Mr. Chair, ito po documented. No, Attorney Pocalan may have knowledge of this. Attorney, uh, arbitration office po to, sa legal po to. Can you please reply? Uh, uh, yes. yes, sir. Uh, I recall uh, that time, uh, I was just a staff lawyer, no? So, although I heard about that uh, issue on... Uh, Bakit po, kung hindi pa kayo tatanungin, hindi po kayo sasagot, eh, alam nyo naman po pala. Tinatanong ko lang kung alam ninyo. Sana po yung nakakaalam, sumagot po kagad para mabilis naman tayo. Kung hindi po kayo tatanungin ni Mr. Chairman, hindi po kayo sasagot. Palagang ganun po yung actuation ninyo. Eh. Tama po ba na noong 2011 or that year, thereabouts, merong 240 million na demand ang PhilHealth from HMI, who was then managing... Cardinal Santos Hospital. I recall, sir, meron pong ganun. Meron, okay. I'm not just sure, sir, yung total, ano talaga, yung total amount, kung 240 million. Nasa record nga po eh. Pakikita ko mamaya sa inyo, there are two demand letters written by PhilHealth to HMI. Ang nangyari po, initially, nire-review ko ito, at the initial stage, of your uh, negotiation with HMI, nagkaroon po ng joint accounting and reconciliation. Honorable uh, uh, yes, Marcoleta, po. mabilis lang po tanong nga, para lang malinaw, step by step. Bakit to ang kaso ninyo, Hospital Managers Inc. versus Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Manila and PhilHealth Corporation? Ba't nadamay po ang Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Manila? Tony Pukalan. Sorry, sir. Uh, I cannot exactly recall the ano, ano, yung uh, facts nung uh, case. Who, who knows? Uh, Attorney Del Rosario, alam niyo po ba ito? Ang uh, nakapil... Yes, go ahead. Yung uh, issue na po na yan ay sa arbitration office po yung enforcement ng mga penalties. No? So the, for the record, the arbitration office is not under the legal sector. So if you uh, uh, if we can request the head of the arbitration office to answer the questions, uh, Mr. Chairman. Who is the head of the arbitration office? Attorney, Attorney J. Villegas, Vice President. Anjang ka pala eh. Parang halapan ng halapan dito sa PILEL para... Masagot. Andito sa arbitration office. Hindi, sino yung sumasagot kanina sa As, tong... Tinanong ko si Attorney Del Rosario because I thought uh, arbitration was under legal. Meron palang separate. Yes, Attorney... Speak on the mic. Please use the mic, please. Go on record. Hindi pa po ako nag-out. Ha? Hindi pa po ako nag-out. Ah, go ahead. No, it's okay. Di ba kanina sinabi all plenary? Anyway, just take your oath. Please, baka nga hindi ka nag-out. Nagsabi ka na nang hindi ka nag-out. Please stand up. Comsec, please administer the oath. Please raise your right hand. This is where to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this joint congressional inquiry. So help you God. Thank you. Okay, why was the, the case Hospital Managers Inc. versus Roman Catholic Church and PhilHealth? Sir, actually, sir, yung case po na yan is not an arbitration case. In audit po ng PhilHealth si Mr. Cardinals. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chair, pwede bang palakasan natin yung boses nung sumasagot? Kung nakamas po kayo, lapit nyo yung inyong ano. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, yung case po na yan, in audit po ng PhilHealth ang Cardinal Santos. Tama po si Congressman na 3,000 lang po ang charge ni Cardinal Santos sa all uh, patients po na covered ng PhilHealth. And then the, the Cardinal Santos will claim from PhilHealth the actual uh, people service payment. So, ang PhilHealth po nagbabayad kay Cardinal Santos ng, let's say, isang case po ay 16,000, pero ang, binaya, ang, ang binawas lang po sa account ng patient ay 3,000. Okay, before tayo pumasok dyan sa overpayment, no? the Honorable McCorretta will ask that. Ang tanong ko, Bakit na damay ang Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Manila at saka PhilHealth Insurance Corporation? Ang alam ko po kasi yung Cardinal Santos is under the diocese. May ari ng diocese? Yes po. 
Eh, ano itong hospital managers? Sila po ang nagmamanage. So, this is owned by the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Manila, managed by Hospital Managers, Inc. Okay, ano ba naman, Marcoleta? Please continue. Si Atty. Del Rosario kasi, sinabi niya, ang makakasagot, arbitration. Ang sinagot niya ngayon, hindi po arbitration. Talagang si Del Rosario, pag sumagot, talagang puro mali eh. Wala talagang arbitration yun. Totoo yung sinasabi niya na ito ay sa accounting. Nagsimula kayo sa accounting eh. There was a joint accounting and reconciliation undertaken by PhilHealth and HMI. Tama? Pero nung nai-establish na ninyo... Please reply on the mic for the record. At the time that there was already... I'm sorry. Attorney, please reply sa mic para po recorded yung, yung reply ninyo. Go ahead. Anong pangalan niya? Attorney... Yes po. Yes po. I'm sorry, Attorney... J. Villegas po. Villegas. Attorney, Attorney Villegas. Villegas. Attorney Villegas, at the initial point where Peel Health and HMI jointly undertook a, an accounting and reconciliation... There was already a pattern being established na talagang papunta kayo doon sa 240 million pesos to support the demand. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Na-establish ninyo, out of the 8,000 provided by Peel Health to HMI, 3,000 lang ang binabayad, so there is a balance of 5,000 pesos. Across a membership of something like 48,000 members. That is correct. Yes, sir. So, the demand letter of PhilHealth stood on a firm ground. Totoo yung sa inyo. Tama? Yes, sir. Ang problema, bakit imbes na ang PhilHealth ang magdemanda sa HMI, who is then managing Cardinal Santos, nakakapagtaka naman, ang nagdemanda pa sa inyo, ay yung uh, HMI. Baligtad ang nangyari. Ito, madaling sukatin ito eh. The processes taken by its by Peel Health is very suggestive of corruption. I will tell you. Invest na kayo po ang magdemanda. Siguro, kahit i-demanda nyo ng estapa siguro yun or any other uh, criminal cases adaptable and suitable for them. Hinintay ninyo na kayo ang idemanda ng HMI. And the case was litigated somewhere in Pasig City, correct? Branch 130 of the Regional Trial Court. Ngayon, ang lumitaw po, Mr. Chair, hanggang sumabot kayo sa judicial accounting. Honorable Malcoleta, mabilis lang po. Doon po sa sinasabi ninyo na kaso, nakita ninyo 300 million ang sobrang binayad sa Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Nung mag-accounting po, halos ganun po ang umabot. At ang gusto ninyo, i-refund ang pera. Yes po. Wala silang ni-refund. Pinaparefund nga po sa Cardinal Santos, eh hindi po na-refund. Oh. Tapos nawala na po ako sa legal noon. Nalipat na po ako sa internal audit eh. Okay. Pero dun sa accounting ninyo, magkasama kayo ng Cardinal Santos at saka PhilHealth, established din yon. Yes po. Dahil po na-compare yung claims na pinail ng Cardinal Santos against dun po sa binawas lang nila dun sa mga patients. Okay. Ano ba ba So dahil nga hinintay ninyo kayong idemanda ng HMI sa PASIG, ang PASIG Court constituted an arbitration committee, hindi ba? Pardon, sir? Nag-constitute ng uh, arbitration committee yung uh, PASIG Court. Uh, sorry, sir. Hindi na po ako private dun sa transaction po doon. Ako po lamang ay... Ang participation ko lang, sir, is the audit on the claims filed by Cardinal Santos na straight lang na binabawas nila sa lahat ng claims ay 3,000. And then, the Cardinal Santos will file a claim in PhilHealth na magre-reimburse sila for higher amount. 
yung po yung aming uh, transaction ko lang po nung sa Cardinal Sanchez. Pero pero hindi nga po ganoon ang nangyari. So invest na yung 240 million na kan na, na inyong uh, pinarerefund sa kanila. Ang sinetel na lang through the court is 70 million pesos. So ang nawawala po sa PhilHealth ay 170 million pesos. Tama po. I don't have a personal knowledge, sir. Kasi po si attorney uh, Asuncion na po yung SBP Legal. Tapos na po kasi yung audit. So, eh sino po kaya ang nakakaalam noong uh, pagkakarefund ng 70 million pesos na lang out of 240 million? Kasi dito makikita ninyo, palaging dito tayo umiikot yung pag-aalaga ng pondo, yung pagmamalasakit sa pondo, walang masyado kaming nakikita eh. Kamukha nito, meron naman palang basihan na i-refund yung 240 million. Meron naman kayong, nag-join na kayo ng accounting. Noong lumalabas na yung 240 million, tumigil ang HMI. Ang nakakapagtaka, ba't pumayag kayo na kayo ang i-demanda sa korte na baligtad ang pangyayari? Okay? Hindi ko sinasabing may corruption sa korte. Pero ito yung sinasuggest eh. Yung 70 million na lang, ang ibinayad ng HMI. Bakit naman tinanggap ng PhilHealth? Ito po yung nakakapagtaka, Mr. Chair. Eh. Bago pa sila tumanggap ng 70 million, nagkunwari pa sila na kumuha ng legal opinion sa OGCC. <laughs> yung OGCC, kung babasahin po ninyo yung opinion niya, hindi po opinion eh. Mr. Chair, humingi ng opinion yung PhilHealth kung tatanggapin na nila yung 70 million. Alam po ninyo kung ano sinabi ng OGCC? Hindi opinion eh. It's a one-page letter. Reply to the request of PhilHealth for opinion. Sabi ng, sabi ng OGCC, kung inaakala po ninyo na itong pinresent nila na 70 million, ay ayon naman sa inyong uh, sarili kanyang uh, paniwala, ay pwede na. Eh, eh, na, ito ba'y opinion? So makikita po natin, Mr. Chair, meron pong demand na malinaw, 270 million. Gumawa sila ng paraan para paikutin ang gobyerno. Ang nagdemanda pa yung sinisingil para lang magkaroon ng judicial accounting. Dito nila itinago ito, Mr. Chair. Pagkatapos nilang magkaroon ng judicial accounting, hindi ko malaman ngayon Paano ninyo i-account yung balance 170 million? Sabi nga po namin, kahit isang, isang singkong sentimo ang mawala sa pondo ng gobyerno, hahanapin po yun sapagkat pera po ng tao yun. Honorable Correta, ito po ay plunder because ito po ay lagpas pa sa 50 million. This is 170 million na established, hindi binayaran, may kalokohan, and yet they settled. Sinetel nga po nila yung, yung 240, nagsetel po, pumayag ang PhilHealth, 70 million na lamang po. Kaya ang matitira na dapat na ibalik sa kanila, kinalimutan nila. Ngayon, ahanapan natin kayo. Ibig po ba ninyong sabihin, nung magsetel kayo in the amount of 70 million, ganun na lamang po ba yun? Ano pong sasabihin nyo sa miyembro ng PhilHealth? Paano po ninyo i-account to the last centavo yung 170 million na pinayagan niyong mawala sa pondo ng PhilHealth? Ito po yung tanong eh. Kunwari dumaan kayo sa korte para sabihin ninyo, oh, malinis ito kasi galing kami sa korte. Kunwari kumuha kayo ng opinion ng OGCC o para ngayon panindigan na, oh, kinoverap tayo ng OGCC. Legal tayo eh. Paano po maliligal? Meron po ba kayong may papakitang dokumento na kung saan yung 170 million na hinahanap ninyo sa ospital? May kakatwiran po ba ninyo ito sa miyembro ng PhilHealth? Paano ninyo gagawin? Paano ninyo pangangatwiranan na, oh, okay na yung 170 million, nakita na namin kung saan napunta. Wala pong definite accounting kung nasaan yung 170 million pesos. Honorable Marcoleta, 
Yung pong 170 million, hindi na ho binayaran. Itinago na ho yun ng HMI. Yung po nangyari dito, and the time when this was decided, the head of the legal was Attorney Asuncion. Tama po ba, Attorney Villegas? Yes, sir. Siya po ba yung nag-decide para magkaroon ng uh, arbitration and settlement? I think so, sir, kasi siya po ang legal. At siya rin po ang nag-elevate sa board. Actually, sir, si Attorney Pukalan po yung taga-legal at that time. Attorney Pukalan, can you please reply? Sir, in the initial stage of the accounting, I was part of that, ano, but uh, uh, nag-reconstitute po ng team, so hindi na po ako nasama doon sa new team. No? No, pero established po yung 240 million. No question about it. Kasi kahit naman dito sa records ninyo, established eh. Is that correct? Sir, ang alam ko po that time, nagkakaroon ng accounting a comparing ng mga documents ang uh, HMI and PhilHealth. Pero yun na nga, hindi ko na po siya natapos kasi hindi na po ako nasama dun sa team. Sino, hindi na, niyo... Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Honorable Barsaga? Mr. Chairman, I, I want to... Honorable Remulia? Sino-sino yung kasama sa team? I think on the record, we need that, the names of those people in the team. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Ang natandaan ko po, I was replaced by uh, Attorney Dexter Navarro, tapos yung chief po ng HCDMD ng NCR, Dr. Uh, Balbuena. Um, di ko na po si Within the May CPO naman po, sir. We will uh, retrieve the With the indulgence names. of the Honorable Marcoreta, I will, uh, well, you know, si Attorney Asuncion, we asked him to attend the last meeting, but he was, he did not attend. So, uh, uh, with the indulgence of the Honorable uh, Marcoleta, what is the desire? Do we uh, move to declare him in contempt or do we issue a subpoena? Na tama, uh, Komsek, we, nag, sal, nagbigay tayo ng invitation no, the last time? No, sir. Uh, we weren't able to locate him, sir. To Attorney Asunson, I cannot be located. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Honorable Chairman, Rimulia. I believe that we have to send the law enforcement agencies uh, against Attorney Asuncion and uh, we can direct the NBI to study the filing of plunder charges because uh, in this case, the investigation will need law enforcement people to, to locate Mr. Asuncion if he does not want to appear before this body or if he's guilty of any... because he who does not appear before a body like this would, would seem to be guilty, Mr. Chairman. It's a presumption of... Uh, My question to you, Honorable Rimulia, is that when you file this case of plunder, you will enjoin uh, HMI, Hospital Managers, Inc. Tama, Attorney Villegas? Hospital Managers, Inc. Please reply to the mic. Yes, sir. You would have to enjoy uh, the Hospital Managers, Inc. and also the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Manila. Is that correct? Uh... Yes, sir. According, may record po yan malamang sa office of the senior vice president ng legal. Kaya nga, uh, tama ba ako, Tony Villegas? Dahil sabi ni Congressman Bar ni Rimulia, eh, pagka ganito namang malinaw yung kaso as presented by the Honorable Marcoleta, dapat kasuhan na yan ng plunder. Sabi ko sa kanya, pag kinasuhan mo yan ng plunder, dapat idamay mo yung Hospital Managers, Inc. and the Roman Catholic Church Archdiocese of Manila. Tama ba, Tony Villegas? Yes sir. yes, sir. Okay, isa pang tanong sa inyo. Dati niyo yung empleyado, uh, vice president ninyo, and will PhilHealth be willing to file a case on this matter? Case of plunder? The management has to act on it, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Rimulia. So, as uh, motioned by the Honorable Rimulia, uh, if no clarification is given us by Attorney Asunson, by Thursday, the next hearing, this committee will recommend the filing of plunder charges based on the documents submitted to us by PhilHealth Arbitration and PhilHealth Legal and to uh, file a case against uh, Attorney Asuncion, uh, Edgar Asuncion, the uh, Hospital Managers, Inc., and the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Manila.
So move, being, there being no objection, motion is carried. Congressman Marcoleta. Mr. Chair, ito po kasing uh, kasong ito, talagang nakapagtataka, ipinail ng uh, ipinail ng uh, HMI sa Pasig Court. Pagkatapos, ang HMI did not even interpose any objection. Para bang ikinaligaya pa niya na sila i-demanda? Kaya kitang-kita mo na ito yung, ito yung usapan eh. Ito yung proseso eh. If you will trace the documents, it was HMI who is so insistent in settling the case. It wrote PCI twice. Nung primero, ayaw, ayaw pa yung HMI. Tama naman ang sinasabi nitong dalawang gentlemen, pero ang sinasabi lang nila, sa umpisa lang kami kasali. However, that is still correct because tinanggal na yata sila. Pero bago ni kayo tinanggal, you were, able, you were able to establish the validity of the basis of 240 million pesos. That is correct. Yes, sir. Oo. Pagkatapos, o oh, edi dumaan nga sa korte. Ang sasabihin ng ordinaryong tao, eh, nagpasya na ang korte. Pagkatapos, pinasadahan naman ng isang opinion ng uh, OGCC, the Office of the Government Corporate Council. O oh, ang sabi niya, o oh, eh kung sa palagay niyo, tama naman yan, edi eh, eh, okay na yan. Opinion ba yun? Nakapagtataka itong ganitong klase. 170 million ang nawawala ngayon. Paano ngayon kung Hahanapin, hahanapin namin sa PhilHealth. At dapat naman talagang hanapin. Kahit piso lang, kahit sentimo lang, dapat walang mawala sapagkat ito po ay hindi ninyo pera. Pera po ito ng miyembro ninyo. Ang nakalagay pa nga po sa batas, eh, fiduciary responsibility. Nandyan po yan sa IRR po ng PhilHealth. Sa charter ninyo. O eh, kapano ngayon ito, Mr. Chair? Paano ninyo i-account ito? P pwede po bang... Kasi kung itatanong ko kay Atty. Del Rosario ito, sasabihin na naman niya ganito. Wala pa po ako ng panahon na yan. Pero sabi niya, because of my managerial acumen, hindi mo lang niya naisip ito. Kung talagang magaling kang manager, dapat tinitingnan mo lahat ito. Eh, ikaw nang pinakamata sa legal eh. Pero natatandaan mo, nung ikaw ay uh, regional vice president, kahit na sinasabi ko na sa'yo, meron akong dokumento na ikaw mismo ang sinabihan ng fact-finding board, these are the 220 cases, administrative offenses, that you should file in the prosecution department. Ikaw ang head, at under mo yung legal officer mo. Wala kang ipinail kahit isa. Pagkat sasabihin mo, meron kang managerial expertise and so on and so forth. Ang sasabihin na naman niya, eh, wala pa po ako dyan. Eh. Kahit na wala ka pa, tungkulin mong siya sa atin lahat ito dahil pera ng mamamayan ito. Can you imagine 170 million pesos? Isinetel lamang nyo kasi ng 70 million. Hindi ba kayo kinikilabutan? <laughs> Dapat naman sana eh, kayong nilagay dyan para ayusin natin ito, mga kababayan. Alagaan po natin ang pera ng tao. Kasi po, may ingat dapat tayo rito. Eh. Pero hindi ganun ang nangyari. Kagaya ng nililitaw ng mga dokumento ngayon. Uh, Mr. Chairman, anong, anong year nangyari yes. itong sa Cardinal Santos? Ano po? Anong, anong taon nangyari? Ito po nangyari? yung nangyari noong 2011. 2010, 2011 po ito. How about the settlement? The settlement happened in... Uh, 2013, something 2013. like that. Opo. So, no, ganun na lamang, let me just put on record, uh, Comsec, dahil naimbitahan po natin si Attorney Edgar Asuncion upon motion of the Honorable Remulia, imbitahan din po natin ang HMI and uh, the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Manila para po makasagot sila because uh, if not, then the committee as approved will uh, recommend such uh, action. Mr. Uh, Chairman? Yes, Honorable Barsaga. Well, I also move that we require field health to present all the records filed against them by SM HMI, Hospital HMI, Managers Inc. Which became the basis of the settlement for 70 million, all the records. And secondly, to show also to us 
that the agreed settlement of 70 million was actually paid to PhilHealth. Baka may settlement, wala na naman tayong payment or it was transferred to another account. So PhilHealth has to prove that. Thank you. So I shall move, Mr. Chairman. Yes, so ordered, Comsec, by motion of the Honorable uh, Bersaga. Honorable Kalpatbat. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, base sa narinig ko kay Kong Marcoleta, uh, nagsettle yung PhilHealth for uh, less. So, hindi po ba parang income ito dun sa kabilang party? Uh, pwede ipacheck din natin sa BIR kung yung income na nakuha nila dyan sa onerous deal na yan e eh, na-declare nila as income, Mr. Chair. Okay, as a request by the Honorable Kapat Bat, uh, can the BIR shed light on the matter being discussed? Uh, Mr. Villegas of the Arbitration, Attorney Villegas of the Arbitration Committee, kayo po ngayon ang SBP for arbitration. Vice President, sir. I'm sorry, Vice President. Ano pong provision ng batas o ng inyong implementing rules ang pinapayagan ng PhilHealth na makipagkompormiso dito sa mga bayaran sa ospital, bayaran sa koleksyon, at kung ano paman? Sir, in my opinion, sir, the corporation cannot settle because cannot is, settle because it is Congress who can also will only allow a, a public public corporation to in a settlement. Like so you're saying, ang sinasabi mo, etong ginawa nila ng 2011, 2013 ay illegal. Pardon, sir. Yung ginawa ng uh, compromise settlement ng filet at HMI ay illegal. In my opinion, sir. Okay. At wala nang ginagawa pang ibang settlement o compromise ang PhilHealth o meron pa rin po ba? Because I will tell you, we have the records na magpapakita na marami pa kayong settlement. Settlement for the premium payments, sir? Premium payments, uh, benefit claims. Definitely, sir, pag benefit claims, dapat po walang settlement. Thank you for that. Congressman Bersaga. Just a clarification from PhilHealth. Yung mga PhilHealth, merong circular, how you will settle a particular case, kung sino ang authorized makipagsettle, kung kinakailangan ng board approval, kung merong minimum price for settlement, which is normal in every case like this. Meron ba kayong rules and regulations or circular? Guidelines how to settle a particular case, what would be the procedure? O wala na? Bahala na kung sino ang mga members of the board. Sir, it is in the office of the senior vice president for legal po to answer. Sa legal po. Arbitration po kasi ako. Eh, yan nga mga problema natin. Eh. Lagi tayo nagtuturuan dito. Eh. Basic lang naman ang tanong namin. May rules ba kayo or circular or guidelines for settlement? Sound of silence na naman tayo? Uh, with due respect, sir, si Attorney Roger po po ang <coughs> officer in charge. Roger po kalan po. Sir, we have, as, since the Charter of Field Health allows only the compromise or we... Remove your face mask. So that we can understand what you are saying. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honors. Since the field health law allows only the compromise or waiver of interest and surcharges uh, on uh, unpaid or uh, a late remittance of premium, that's the only uh, um, uh, subject. Uh, but that can only be subject of compromise, no? And uh, we have uh, propo guide, proposed guidelines on that, uh, 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 on that subject, but uh, still subject to approval by the PhilHealth Board pa po. Okay. Pakiulit mo para malinawan nating lahat. Yung uh, meron ang base po kasi sa PhilHealth law, the PhilHealth can only compromise or uh, waive interest and surcharges on unpaid premium po. Then we uh, drafted a, a proposal or a, a guidelines on that. However, it is still uh, subject to approval by the PhilHealth Board po. Ang sinasabi mo ngayon, attorney, 
sa, sa PhilHealth Law, ang karapatan lamang ng PhilHealth ay makipag-compromise sa interest and surcharges on unpaid premiums. Tama ba? And up to now, wala kayong guidelines how to settle yung mga interest and charges sa unpaid premiums. Honorable Bersaga? We have a proposed guideline, sir, but it's, it's still uh, subject to okay. approval by the Philhelm Board. So Board. yung compromise or settlement involving Accenture, pati na itong Cardinal Santos, based on your answer, ay hindi authorized ang Philhelm na makipag-compromise or settle. Is that correct? Uh, there is a provision on, uh, under the, um, I think it's the State Audit Code, PD-1445, on compromise of... Uh, no, it's a PD-1445 that applies to the Commission on Audit. Audit, sir. Oh. Yes, so subject to approval by the COA and depend the, uh, it depends on the amount and by Congress. Simply lang tanong ko. Meron ba kayong guidelines? Meron ba kayong circular pertaining to settlement like what had happened sa Accenture at dito sa Cardinal Santos? Yun lamang. Sir, I cannot recall that we have an existing guidelines on that po. Meron? Wala, wala pa akong ma-recall, sir, na oh, meron Wala po. kayong guidelines. Okay. Mr. Chair. Uh, clarification lamang po. Attorney, yes. Uh, Congressman Fernandez. Uh, matanong ko lang kung magkano yung uh, ginawang compromise nila sa Accenture. Ano? Uh, 70 million, di ba? 70 million yung ginawa yung um, uh, compromise. Sir, sa Accenture yata is 5% of the 114, 114 million po. So magkano yun? Huh? 5.7 million. A while ago, uh, uh, Congressman Barbers were saying na magkano yung uh, compromise agreement. Uh, Sir, based po, sa discussion kanina, it's 5% po yung subject of compromise. Is that correct? That, that, that's correct. So, so how, much, say, how much is that? 5.7 million. 5.7 million. Hmm. Tapos, yung uh, compromise natin sa HMI is uh, 70 million. So lumalabas na nawawalan tayo halos ng uh, sa dalawa pa lamang ha na nakipag-compromise kayo nawawalan na tayo halos ng uh, 145 million. Yes, 245 million. Okay. At dalawa pa lamang yan nakikita natin. Yeah. Uh, yung... Parang ang procedure nila dito, Mr. Chairman no. Um uh, meron tayong bagong term dito na dapat malaman ng taong bayan that they are legalizing their greed. Sa totoo lang. So ito pong uh, yung dalawang kaso na yan, yung isa kasi nagbayad, napunta yung pera sa iba. Dito naman sa kabilang kaso, ito, aktual to. Nagkaroon ng pumunta sa ospital, uh, ino to, I, nagkaroon ng uh, pag-aayos ng mga numero, established na 240 million, tapos nasettle na nga ng 70. And based on the ano, statement of Tony Villegas, head of the arbitration committee, wala silang o wala siyang nakikitang uh, legal na batayan para magkaroon ng isang pagkakasunduan or compromise settlement. Wala yun sa batas at wala sa IRR ng PhilHealth. So with that, uh, Congressman uh, Kabatbat. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, may I know if uh, NBI Agent Vernon is uh, already online? NBI Agent Vernon? NBI Agent Vernon. Ah, nandyan? Nandyan po siya? Ah, okay. Uh, NBI Agent Vernon, uh, are you there? Uh, present pero nakamute. So before you start, para lang huma-accommodate natin lahat nung, uh, at matapos na tayo no, doon sa ating hearing, on Thursday we start at 10 in the morning. No, 10 in the morning, magsimula na po tayo 
So, dire-diretso na tayo para matapos na lahat ng iba pang katanungan. But today, uh, pag nandiyan na po si Attorney Vernon, please tell me. But today, we have... Thursday already... on Thursday, Mr. Chairman. Thursday, okay. uh, Congressman Rimulya. Na pag-usapan na yung Accenture, uh, yung sa hospital sa Cardinal, na pag-usapan na rin po... Uh, uh, nabanggit na rin po yung nangyari doon sa Pangasinan. Uh, uh, and the Honorable Barbers spoke about uh, Balanga also. So, go ahead, Congressman Kapatbat. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, may I know if uh, online na o present na si Agent Vernon? Kung hindi, baka we can uh, go to former Director Pamonag muna. Kung wala si Agent Vernon, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair, kung wala si Agent Vernon, uh, can we proceed to Director Pamonag muna? Sir Chair. Uh, okay, Director uh, Pamonag, no? Sorry. Director Pamonag, ito yung natanggal na Regional Director kung saan nandun yung case ni Dr. Mengita at yung case na ifinal nyo. Director uh, Pamonag, is recognized? Yes, Your Honor. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Magandang umaga po. Go ahead. Magandang umaga po and thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I proceed? No. Uh, Director Pamonag, uh, are you familiar with uh, Dr. Mark Dennis Mingita? Uh, I haven't met Dr. Mingita not even once. I am just familiar about some complaints filed against him. Okay, uh, from what I have gathered, Ms. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, si Director Pamonag ay uh, natanggal sa Region 12. Uh, pwede niyo po ba ikwento bakit kayo natanggal? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. And uh, may, I, may I be allowed to present my case? At, this will not take two to three minutes, uh, Your Honor. Go ahead, Honor. ma'am. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I am Miriam Grace G. Pamonag, the previous RVP of Regional uh, PhilHealth Region Office 12 from December 9, 2014 and until March 5, 2019. Um, I have been a crusader for anti-fraud activities, consistently advocate for policy reforms, and uh, I haven't been involved in any corrupt practices in the past not until in March 26, 2018, when an administrative case was filed against me and my three officers and Attorney Gelbert Galicto of Pro or PhilHealth Regional Office, Caraba. I was charged with grave misconduct and conduct prejudicial to the best interest of the service for merely writing a letter requesting for the release of the 2016 Christmas assistance package to Pro-12 regular employees. Attorney Galicto was also charged with gross neglect of duty and conduct grossly prejudicial to the service for alleged deliberate failure to render a legal opinion in order to facilitate the release of the 2016 Christmas assistance package for regional Office 12. But the truth is, the request for that legal opinion was already withdrawn by the requesting president. My letter request was approved by the then acting president and the exicom at the central office during their regular exicom meeting and funds were transferred to PhilHealth Regional Office 12. There was no power disallowance of this particular package. On January 3, 19, or 2019, I received the board's decision modifying the recommendation of the ad hoc committee headed by Mr. Mass and absolving me of the offense of grave misconduct because I sought prior approval from the management but found me guilty of conduct prejudicial to the best interest of service and admitted me the maximum penalty of one year suspension despite the fact that it was my first offense. January 18, I seasonably filed a motion for reconsideration. Your Honor, on the first part of 2019, 
I wrote the accreditation department a request, a requesting for a copy of resolutions of the accreditation committee on the removal of gap of accreditation and the reversal of the region's recommendation for non-renewal of accreditation of one hospital involved in the Mengita case. January 29, I received a reply that they cannot provide the resolutions because the names of the HCIs being deliberated by the committee are all anonymized. And on February 11, only 13 days after I received the reply to my request, the board of directors in its regular board meeting outrightly denied my motion for reconsideration. The board was out to afford was not out to afford me due process and fairness, but simply out to convict me no matter what. It revived the grave misconduct and meted me the penalty of dismissal. And on March 5, I seasonably filed an appeal with the CSC citing the violation of my right to due process and that the penalty imposed was too grave for the alleged offense. Your Honor, if I may add, because of my consistent crusade against fraud and advocacy for reform and good governance, there is an alleged attempt to remove me from Region 12, if not from Field Health. On February 2018, I recommended for non-renewal of one of the hospitals involved in the Mingita case on the ground of failure to pass the integrity test under Section 59F of the IIRRR of RA 1066. On March 26 to February 24, to March 26 to June 24, I was preventively suspended for 90 days. July 5. 11 days after my suspension, the acting president, Ferrer, issued an order reassigning, reassigning me to Pro Caraga. I filed an appeal to the civil service only July 6, which stayed the reassignment. January 23, Ferrer issued another order, this time giving a special assignment, but effectively removing me as RVP by designating Mr. Donatos as the OIC. The order was issued within the period of the election ban on personal transfer and movement, and there was no evidence at that time that they have secured exemption from the COMELEC. I filed a complaint with the Ombudsman, which is now the subject of their preventive suspension. Another complaint with the COMELEC is still pending at this moment. And lastly, your Honor, if I may borrow Honorable Kabat-Bat's words, if you are doing well in your job, you have no place in field health. Dapat kang tanggalin. We have seen that there were cases involving millions, if not billions of pesos, that remained unresolved. But my act of writing a letter to plead in behalf of my people took only months to be resolved that resulted to my dismissal. Thank you, Your Honor. Director Pamonag, para lang kong malinaw, yung pong isang healthcare institution, pinapatanggal nyo na kung saan nagpa-practice o ginagawa ni Dr. Mengita yung kanyang gawain na nagkakaroon ng mga peking pasyente. Tama po ba? Ye yes, Your Honor. That was in. We recommended for its non-renewal because the hospital failed the integrity test. Ano pong hospital to? And uh, that was that's the, the same hospital mentioned in the Senate hearing in 2019. That, uh, that's the St. Louis Hospital. St. Louis Hospital. Dininay po kayo ng board, uh, ng, uh, not the board, dininay po kayo ng station basis po. Uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor, but I missed that part. Can you repeat, please? Ang sabi niyo po, sinasabi niyo wag i-accredit pero hindi po pinagbigyan dahil daw po ano daw po ang batayan nila. Ah, okay. So we recommended for its non-renewal. We submitted it to central office and uh, central office uh, overturned our recommendation 
and they um, removed the gap of the accreditation of the hospital. So the hospital continued to be accredited. Uh, and well, that was not only the first time that um, it happened. I think before me, during the previous uh, RVP, the same thing happened. There was recommendation for non-renewal, yet uh, when, the, when the hospital would file for memorandum for a uh, motion for reconsideration, central office would uh, overturn our recommendation. So ma'am, wala pong ginawang basis sila, basta hindi nila pinapansin yung inyong petition for non-renewal of accreditation. Tinutuloy pa lang, lang din nila yung kanilang accreditation. Yes, um, the hospital, Your Honor? Yes. The, the, the yes. accreditation office, uh, basta ho sila, tinutuloy lang nila yung accreditation, hindi nila pinapansin yung kanyang apila. Ah, uh, well... Uh, well, um, that may be so. That is why in January 2019, Your Honor, I wrote Central Office to furnish me with the resolutions for us to be guided on what to do for next uh, delivery, for subsequent deliberation, so that we may not be committing if, there, if we, we fail on or, or miss something about our own validation. If we have the resolution from the Central Office that would serve as our guide in order for us to do the best thing for the subsequent deliberations. And Director Pabonag, but, hindi ito ang kauna-unahang pagkakataon na nangyari yung ganito? Sinasabi mo, maraming beses na nangyari sa iyan? Yes, in the past, but in my case, it only happened once. Okay. Honorable Kapatbat? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, susugang ko lang yung line of questioning ni uh, Chairman uh, Mike Defensor. No? Uh, I... I appreciate the effort of uh, Director Pamonag and uh, her statement that uh, uh, she wants a corrupt-free pill help. No, uh, Mr. Ano, Director Pamonag, uh, matanong ko lang, totoo ba na you, you even undertook a massive information campaign against the wellness program of uh, Dr. Mark Dennis Mingita? Is that true? Ah, the first, uh, the first, the first uh, thing that I did when I heard that there was a wellness program involving doctors, HCIs, the first thing that I did uh, was to issue an advisory to the public so that they may be aware of the wellness program that is going on. And uh, if you check, we have a regular radio program every Sunday. Wellness program would always be part of our announcement to the public. I see. So, uh, Director, aminado kayo na itong ino-offer ni Dr. Mark Dennis Mingita na wellness program ay illegal. Tama po ba? Yeah, yes, yes. It could be because um, if you are a... You do not gather people to go to you because... People who are really sick would go to the doctor. It's not going to be the doctor who would seek for patients or for people and pretend that they are sick. I see. Uh, thank you, uh, Director Pamonag. Kasi I, uh, I really appreciate uh, what you've done, yung pagtanggal ng accreditation ng mga hospital at uh, pakikipaglaban sa... Uh, at pakikipag... Uh, yung pagtayo sa... Decision mo na tanggalin yung accreditation nito mga hospital na involved sa ginagawa ni Dr. Mengita. I appreciate that, uh, Mr. Chair. Kaya lang, nung sinabi mo na illegal ang wellness program ni Dr. Mark Dennis Mengita, and you even uh, did a campaign uh, to warn the public about the wellness program of Dr. Mark Dennis Mengita, kaya lang, nung may nag-file ng complaint laban kay Dr. Mark Dennis Mengita, about this wellness program, bakit po nyo dinismiss? Ah, okay. Your Honor, not all complaints were dismissed. Hmm. Yung, there were uh, complaints that we conducted investigation. Yung dismissal nyo po nung dated October 24, 2017, nakalagay dito uh, sa complaint yung wellness program ni, ni Dr. Mingita, pero nakakapagtaka na i-dinismiss nyo yung kaso. Eh, sabi nyo kanina, illegal yung wellness program, pero nung may nagre-reklamo, eh, dinismiss nyo naman itong wellness, yung complaint against that wellness program of Dr. Mingita. Can you yes. reconcile that, uh, Director? Yes. Your Honor, uh, I have here with me my file. Uh, this, 
this is my file while I was still connected with PhilHealth, no? Because as of now, in my status, I cannot get uh, more files from the office, no? We have a complaint here. Um, I think uh, this is a complaint about the wellness program. And the office conducted investigation. I think this concerns an eye surgery on a certain Cecilia Tadora. And no. uh, it, it, dito po sa, sa briefer kasi ng case, on this particular case, Miss, uh, the, the people who are alleged who are alleged to be recruiters um, submitted an affidavit that uh, they were not uh, recruiters for the wellness program of Dr. Mengita. And uh, there is also an affidavit here of Dr. Mengita's wife and father-in-law saying that they are not recruiters for the wellness program of Dr. Mengita. So um, the observation observe unusual pattern. I know the confinement. You know there is no offense. The the recommendation of my legal unit then was there was no offense committed by Dr. Mengita when he referred Ms. Tadora to undergo eye surgery since the patient, considering that upon check of the patient complained of blurry vision and showed signs of horror. Are you referring, Mr. Director? Uh, Director, this is a very, you know, uh, director. This is a very long briefer. And I can only say to you, and I can assure you that uh, investigation was conducted on this particular complaint, Your Honor. Director Pamonag, uh, tanong lang po, may mga kaso ho naman kayo talaga na if against, or at least may findings kayo against Dr. Mengita and some healthcare institutions. May ganun po bang nangyari sa inyo? Yes, there were three healthcare institutions that were... Um, that were investigated and the result of the investigation was awarded to the central office. Against the Dr. Mengita po? Yeah. Against Dr. Mengita, meron din po? Against Dr. Mengita, the only, we had only um, come far as uh, with regards to his complaint for the PRC. So we coordinated with the PRC, we wrote the PRC and the PRC replied to us that uh, his case was still on appeal with the uh, uh, court of appeal so that is why that uh, we cannot we cannot uh, remove his accreditation based on this uh, prc complaint because we received already a uh, a reply from the prc so there is no reason for us not or not, there is no reason for us to 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 use this PRC complaint in order for him not to file file his um, uh, claims with field help. Uh, but, but. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, once again, I appreciate you standing up for the truth, especially in uh, revoking the accreditation of these hospitals. And uh, kaya lang, meron talaga akong hindi lang ma-reconcile na sabi nyo, illegal lang wellness program, pero nag-dismiss naman kayo ng kaso against Mingita. Uh, about wellness program. Last question to Director Pamonag na lang, no? uh, Mr. Chair. Hindi po ba ang regional ay recommendatory lang sa dismissal ng case? Uh, bakit po lumalabas dito na sa level pa lang ng region, sa level nyo, na dismiss na yung kaso against Dr. Mengita? Yes. Uh, on the second case, the recommend... Uh, yes, the case was dismissed dito po sa regional level because the legal unit did not find uh, prima facie evidence and in, uh, then but then we reco we forwarded the, the 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 findings to the central office and to be candid about this uh, we were even issued show cause order by the central office why we dismissed the case and um and then it went thorough we answered we replied to the show cause order and uh, eventually Central Office has seen that there was indeed no prima facie evidence and the show was uh, order to us was dismissed as well by the Central Office, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Although I disagree na walang prima facie evidence, uh, maraming mga whistleblowers eh. So, but anyway, I, in the meantime, I would accept that uh, answer that raises more questions. But once again, I admire that you stood up for uh, revoking the 
accreditation of these hospitals. Uh, I have no further question to Director uh, Pamonag. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, may tanong lang ako kay uh, Congressman Argel, no? Yung piling dun sa PRC, dun sa revocation ng kanyang uh, practice, ano, kay uh, Mingita, uh, ano bang nakapaloob dun sa, sa desisyon? Uh, pending appeal ba? He cannot practice the uh, yung kanyang uh, profession? He can still or practice. He can still practice. Yes, Mr. Can we ask PRC, Mr. Chairman, about this? Kasi, you know, yung appeal nila is will, uh, will go to a lot of ano, eh, processes, no? And uh, at the same time, sa PhilHealth, ano ang magiging policy natin? Kung ipoprolong nila yung uh, process ng appeal, eh nakakapag-practice pa si Dr. Mengita. And I think this is uh, somehow um, disadvantageous sa PhilHealth na nakikita natin that uh, they are violating uh, yung binigay natin sa kanilang uh, uh, renewal eh, tapos napoprolong niya yung kanyang uh, uh, suspension. So, Mr. Chairman, andyan ang PRC. Siguro, pwede ba natin matanong sila? Yes, uh, PRC. Just for the record, uh, while they're getting PRC, I think it is the Court of Appeals who gave uh, para bang nagkaroon ng... Uh, Restraining order that they can, I mean, injunction that they can continue to practice whilst the revocation of their yes, license. Yes, so in that case, Mr. Chairman, siguro ang tanungin natin yung policy maker, yung field health. Anong ginagawa natin sa ganitong mga klase? Would you want to still uh, go to PRC to ask the question? Uh, policy, siguro si ano? Uh, si Pargas. Mr. Chairman? Yes, yes, Attorney Bersaga. Can we ask PRC, PRC kung muna. yung kanilang PRC. mga desisyon ay immediately executory yes, until there is a, unless there is a restraining order issued by the Court of Appeals? That is correct, uh, Mr. Chairman. Can we ask the uh, PRC kung uh, ano naging desisyon nila sa kasong to? PRC is recognized. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Good afternoon. I am uh, Doctora Eleanor Almoro, member of the Board of Medicine from the Professional Regulation Commission. Good afternoon po. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, good afternoon. Ang tinatanong po ni Deputy Speaker Fernandez, yung pong mga nagkaroon ng kaso, pero they, of course, they go on appeal, nakapag-continue po. Paano po ba yung policy nyo sa PRC tungkol dyan? Uh, okay. So, if a case is filed and has been decided by the Board of Medicine, and there are no further uh, motions for reconsideration or appeal, the penalty is now final and executory. However, in the case of uh, Dr. Mengita, uh, in the case of Dr. Mengita, the decision at the level of the Board of Medicine uh, was uh, guilty. It was appealed to the commission. The commission um, upheld the decision of the Board of Medicine. Now, the respondent filed a case in the Court of Appeals. That's why the, the, the penalty is uh, not yet executory. Just a clarification, Mr. Chairman. Kung sakasakaling may desisyon na ang Professional Regulation Commission at yung desisyon ay inapila ng complainant sa Court of Appeals, will the decision be considered executory although there is a pending appeal? No. Uh, sir, may I answer? Yes, uh, go no, ahead, ma'am. The... The case now is not yet final and executory because it has been appealed to the Court of Appeals. Ang sinasabi ko, ang tinatanong ko, ay yung desisyon ng PRC ay in appeal. And it so happened that the, that the decision is revocation of license to practice medicine. Yung bang desisyon ng PRC ay immediately executory kahit na ina-appeal in the absence of a restraining order so that we may be guided. Uh, sir, the practice in PRC is that uh, it is not yet executory until the Court of Appeals 
uh, renders its decision and its decision becomes final. Well, I am not talking about the practice. It is possible that the practice may be in violation of the law. Ang tinatanong ko lang, sa batas ba? Sa, in, sa rules ng PRC at sa applicable rules, applicable laws, yung bank decision ng PRC immediately executory. Not the practice. Because even if there has been a practice, if that is contrary to law, that would be illegal. Ma'am, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, yun po nga kang, ang ginagawa namin dito. I will... Uh, uh, the case is not yet... Because, sir, okay, the decision of the board and the commission is the one being questioned in the Court of Appeals. So, in other words, you just uh, present to us a legal opinion na yung mga decision nyo, even if final but not yet executory in the event that there is an appeal before the Court of Appeals, kahit na walang restraining order, ay pwede pa silang mag-practice ng kanilang mga profesyon. Because I have a different view. So in order not to argue this legal matter, i-present na lamang ang justification nyo na yung decision ng PRC will not be immediately executory. Thank you, Honorable and, Persaga. And, 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 uh, Mr. Chairman, may tanong lang po ako sa PRC. Uh, before the action of the uh, Court of Appeals with regards to uh, TRO, uh, na-execute na ng PRC yung revocation ng uh, license. Ganun ba nangyari, PRC? Kasi uh, it takes time also to file a, uh, a uh, TRO and decision coming from the Court of Appeals. But uh, prior to that, na i-render na yung uh, execution ng uh, revocation. Uh, hindi po sir because they were able to file their motion uh, right their away motion in the court of appeals within the regulatory period. So right away nakapag-file sila yes. ng TRO. But if they were not able to file within that uh, period of time then it becomes final. Clarification siguro PRC you know the, the the case that was filed sa PRC involves what? immoral and uh, dishonorable uh, conduct po ano ba si Dr. Mingita po ha? Yes. Uh, this is not related to field health. The case filed uh, against him was for immoral conduct. Okay. Thank you Mr. Chairman. So and and po, what was Dr. the decision of PRC? Po, just to clarify, ano decision ng PRC? The decision Which was of appeal? the Board of Medicine was guilty. This uh, on appeal to the court to the uh, PRC Commission, this was upheld. And then, so now the respondent filed a motion um, in the Court of Appeals. Well, the, the, the decision was guilty ang respondent. What was the penalty given? Revocation of license, okay. Doctora? Sir, Revocation. So Revocation of license, Mr. Chair. Doctora, go ahead. Sir, I, sorry, I, can, I, can we check the records on that? Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, sa mga ganitong kaso ba, ano ang policy ng, ano natin, ng PhilHealth? Kapag hindi pa ba final and executory yung uh, decision ng uh, court sa mga airing mga uh, position, ay, uh, we can still uh, uh, accredit them? Policy sector. Mr. Chair? Uh, uh, one by one, uh, Dr. Pargas, I'm sorry. Dr. do you have a reply? Sir, uh, I'm so sorry. What is the question? The what question was, was, was ano penalty uh, ni uh, Dr. Mengita? Revocation Sir, of license. I'm so sorry. We have to check the records. Ah, you don't uh, have it now. Okay. So, okay. Please stay on the uh, Please stay there in Zoom. Uh, Dr. Pargas, your reply? Mr. Chair, uh, first, Sir, I'd like to most respectfully manifest uh, that uh, I have received an order from the Ombudsman. Uh... And that I also sent a letter with regard to this to this committee. So I'd like to manifest on that. Uh, and second, sir, you know, sir, yes, if the uh, decisions are not yet final and executory, then we don't uh, implement it yet. 
Okay, maraming salamat, Mr. Chairman. Doktor, last question na lang po sa PRC. Meron po kayong legal legal diyan po sa inyo sa PRC, no? Maging sa uh, sa board ninyo, sa P PRC board? Yes, sir. Sige po. So, yung guidance lang po na hiningi ni uh, uh, Congressman Barsaga as to the uh, decisions being final and executory ng inyong uh, ng inyong board at ng inyong respective uh, ano to, respective uh, respective commission. So, Honorable Barsaga? So, oh, yun lamang. Okay. Ano penalty? Revocation of license? Ay, uh, tinitingnan pa nila sa record sila Congressman Barsaga. Okay. Pero we'll just ask that, we'll ask that and we'll also ask for the uh, yung legal guidance na tinatanong niyo kanina. And I think Position in paper, connection with the question of Deputy Speaker Fernandez, siguro ang dapat natin tanong, itanong ay sa Vice President ng legal ng PILEL kung ano policy nila sa mga adverse decisions ng PRC. PRC kung ina-accredit pa nila yung mga doktor na mayroon ng desisyon ng PRC na revocation of license but that is not final, final sapagkat dinala ng doktor sa Court of Appeals ang kaso. Po nila, Congressman Barsaga, sabi lang hindi pa final and executory, they will recognize the accreditation. Hindi pa final. Final na in so far as the uh, Professional Regulation Commission is concerned, but not yet executory because the case is on appeal. Kaya ano ang sagot ni Dr. Bragas? Bargat. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, for this case po, uh, the uh, accreditation was continued because uh, again, the decision was not final and executed. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, do you have a circular for that? Um, Mr. Chair, I would like to, uh, uh, because during this time, I was not in the uh, sector. Nga, kasi ang sinasabi mo, no, no, uh, yan or, ang ruling nyo. Kaya ang tanong ko, meron ba kayong circular? No, no, tinatanong ko, hindi ka naman miyembro. Mr. Chairman. Ba, kung pwede hong makahingi sa inyong uh, accreditation uh, sector nung policy tungkol dyan, if you can for, furnish this committee. Mr. The Honorable uh, Rimulia. Mr. Chairman, let me remind PhilHealth that the accreditation of one person is not a right. It is a privilege. And if PhilHealth will only we will just listen to its own to, to, to common sense that should be enough ground for them to to drop the person from accreditation because if the person already has a derogatory record why accredit him it is not a right mr chairman they're they're treating it as if it is a vested right that is demandable it is not a demandable right mr chairman it's a privilege to be accredited by PhilHealth. thank you honorable Remulia. So yung accreditation po ninyo, if you can submit to us the procedure on that para humakita natin. So Mr. thank Chair, you. Yes. Honorable Kabatbat, last word. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, as far as uh, Director Pamonag is concerned, I have no further questions. But I would like to ask if Agent Vernon is already online. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Honorable Kabatbat, uh, but uh, there is, uh, they have to disinfect again the plenary. Uh, so we, we have to exit by uh, this time. I would like to ask uh, for the next round, uh, Mr. Chair, for yes. an opportunity to interpolate uh, Agent Vernon. Yes, before I continue, let me just recognize the arrival of our hardworking minority floor leader. We have uh, a balanced group here of uh, the senior citizens and the not so uh, senior ones. Well, no, but I just want to emphasize that there are many people here who are not going to be out. But our uh, senior members of the Congress are still here para ho umaten dito. So with that, on Thursday, 10 a.m., aga na po Your natin. Your Honor? Yes, Doctor. Uh, Your Honor, this is again Dr. Pamona. With your indulgence, I would want to make one statement only. Very, very, it will not take 15 seconds. Go ahead. Yes, Your Honor, I just would want to 
to say that uh, during my stint as a government servant, I was never involved in any corrupt practices. And it's not, it's not only me who is standing by what is right and what is wrong. We have other officers in the, in the, in, in the corporation who also consistently crusade against fraud and advocate for reforms and good governance who are also facing admin cases of all sorts. And I think this will be submitted to us, to you also by the Civil Service Commission on Thursday so that you will have a better idea on what is, what is happening to good people in the corporation. With that, Your Honor, thank you so much. Dr. Pomonag, bago tayo magtapos, ikaw ba'y naniniwalang may mafia dyan sa loob ng PhilHealth? Well, it depends. But uh, we were tagged last year as the mafia, but we are the good mafia. If it's the price that we have to pay being tagged as the mafia for standing for what is right, so be it, Your Honor. Thank you, Director Pamonag. Uh, maraming maraming pong salamat sa inyong lahat. Ito naman po ay uh, suspension lang ng ating hearing. Thursday, 10 a.m., tapusin na po natin lahat ng ating mga ginagawa para ho, uh, makagawa na tayo ng mga pag-aaral tungkol dun sa mga rekomendasyon ng ating komite, including the plunder case, as uh, we have discussed. Uh, marami naman pong linaw na yung nangyayaris dito. Today, we have finished the civil service, Accenture, Balanga, Cardinal Santos, and the Mingita case. So on Thursday, 10 a.m., marami po salamat sa mga guests natin sa PhilHealth na nandito ngayon. Doon po sa Zoom, sa lahat po ng ating mga guests, and of course, the Honorable Members of the Congress now in Zoom and here in plenary, Honorable Barsaga, Honorable Abante, Honorable Ramulia, Honorable Kabatbat, Honorable Marcoleta, and Honorable Fernandez, and my co-chairman, Chairman John Alvarado, this committee hearing is temporarily suspended.